What's up, viewers and listeners? My name is Jay. I'm a registered nutritionist based here in Bristol, working with BJJ enthusiasts across the globe, helping jiu-jitsu practitioners perform to their best ability on the mat, whilst making sure they are not doing anything stupid with their weight cuts. On today's episode, we had Mark Hibbard. He is a competitive brown belt under a previous podcast guest, Rich Rubino, at RR Jiu-Jitsu in Bristol. Mark has competed at multiple IBJJF events, competed on the recent Glapple Fest, qualified for the English Open Pro League against some of the biggest name in the UK Jiu-Jitsu scene at the moment, along with many other sub-only comps. In this podcast, we talked about weight training for jits, hard-working mindset, how Mark built his size in the first place, the secret of Diet Coke, and much, much more. Thank you for tuning in. And of course, if you're not subscribed, please click that subscription button and turn on notifications for further posts. Thank you for watching and listening. Let's get into episode 16. Oosh. Right, guys, episode 16. My name is Jay. I'm the host of the BJJ Nutrition Podcast and the BJJ Nutrition Consultancy. We help BJJ practitioners perform their best by knowing what to eat at the right times with the right supplements uh, and making sure they don't do anything silly with their weight cuts. Today, I am with someone who's got a quarter of a million views on Grapple Fest um, over their last reel. Had an awesome highlight reel. Um, has been one of our sponsored athletes for actually got a bit of nostalgia, but coming over up over a year now, which is really really cool. Yeah. Um, and is just an all round fucking solid guy, and I believe has awesome some good karaoke skills from what I've seen. Right, so, oh shit, okay. Um, but yeah, I'll let you introduce yourself. The, I'm here with uh, hi, um, Mark Hibbard, uh, brown belt uh, under Rich Rubino. So RR Jiu Jitsu. We're also under Pedro Bessa. Um, yeah, 27. Actually, my birthday next month. Yeah. Um, old man. I am getting old. <laughs> I say I'm starting to well, I swear a lot as well. So if it's you don't fine. like swearing, probably turn it down. You'll be fine. It's all good. <laughs> Other cool bleepers. Bleepers, <laughs> bleepers, 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 bleepers. All the bloopers. Now, the cool thing is, mate, we're actually in your new facility as well. We well, are. Again, yours, Rich's, I don't know. Yes. So uh, me and Rich have opened our own academy in Hannon, Bristol, uh, which we are sat in now. It, Jay, when he walked in, said it smells like a new car. Yeah. Everything <laughs> is pristine and brand new. And uh, yeah, can't wait to get started in here. We actually open in two days. Which should be awesome. We'll be down yeah. obviously for that one as well. I awesome. generally cannot wait for the winter months when all those windows are going to be super steamy and everyone's going to be like wiping in, like what the fuck's going on in there? Like of episode, of, not episode Titanic, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be, like, <laughs> 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 be fucking hilarious. Someone from the pub will be looking in. What's yeah, going on? Like, what's there? going on there? It seems like all clear and all of a sudden the class starts. Always. And then, like, and then everyone's going to come out like dripping and sweat, basically. Like what the fuck's going on there? It's so, fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> go and hydrate yourself. <laughs> yeah, mate. I can't wait for a few. It'll be. I, I think the one thing I'm looking forward to, mate, will be like potentially peak summer next year. Maybe even this year, might be able to squeeze in. It'll be like hot, sweaty session on a Friday and go for a drink afterwards type thing. So it's just, literally, it's just right. across the road. So. We literally have a pub opposite, so we'll be dangerous for members. Definitely. It's all good. Has to be done. But awesome fucking facility, mate. Really happy for you guys. Thank you very much, um, I know, obviously, you have been pre at previously at other facilities. I know you've been at a middle, middle ground at BJJ Fitness Unit now, yes. which has now been turned into a strongman place. Uh, right? Yeah, still they got um, still got their mats down, but they're, yeah, strongman place as well. That's nice. That's um, cool. Yeah, Stevie's place, and obviously we're really thankful for him for uh, letting us be there on the interim while we were getting this ready. Um, yeah, it uh, seems like ages, but we turned it around quite quick. Um, yeah. Everyone involved has worked their nuts off, to be honest, to get it ready. Yeah, it's been nice to see the whole club get behind it as well. It's yes. not just being All the like boys have been you, good. you and Rich have been doing it or anything like that. Everyone's got involved and done some sort of shift here, there, type of thing. Yes, so. Every, yeah, everyone's, everyone's done their bit. Everyone we've asked has mucked in, which has been good. Um, we couldn't have asked for much more, really, from everyone. Yeah, but I think it just shows, obviously, with the guys and girls obviously do compete underneath you all have a solid game. There's no, like, there's no fluff, to say the least. I think is the best way of describing it. No. Um, and everyone's sort of brought up to a very good calibre, and I think that ethos gets through from the ground up, basically, which is really good. So. Sure, definitely one thing me and Rich try and instill in everyone. Like, it comes from Rich, I, I do it. We, we all try to put into everyone. Like, even if your technique's not there, just have a good scrap. <laughs> and no but it, it's good like it gets the fight in people and then they get the technique to go along with it and they've already got that fight instilled in them and then they suddenly become a good competitor like, we've got some guys that are absolute savages yeah. they haven't been training that long um, and that's because they've got that bit of grit 
then they start getting the technique and then it mixes together and now we've got some yeah. proper savages in the club. So. You have, mate. I think you've definitely got a few, what I'd say, dark horses within there who yes. I think locally are well known. I'm, I'm going to fucking hate this because I'm not going to say it's Jake, but I think it's Jack, isn't it? Jack, yes. Yep. Um, yeah. He's well unknown, I'd say, like in terms of it because I, he basically seems as cool as a cucumber and then just fucking tears people apart, basically. Yeah, he is a uh, yeah, dark horse. Jack, um, he's still young. What was he, 21? Yeah, 21. <laughs> <laughs> Purple belt, absolute fucking savage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if he keeps going the way he is, he's uh, going to be taking some big names. Definitely, mate. I have the joys of being trying <coughs> on him by it every time I see him. I'm like, oh, everyone's mate. played played around in Jack's triangle. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first time I rolled him, I was like, I'm going to call you Brian T City from now on because that's literally all you seem to fucking do. <laughs> Not saying he's, he can't do anything else. Like, no, I think he's got an all round game, but yeah, if you get stuck in his triangle, it's an absolute fucking nightmare. Nightmare, exactly. Um, but yeah, mate, fucking awesome city. I'm looking forward to obviously seeing this all sort of kick off and just carry on from there and just grow even more, mate. And I, I could probably even put money on it, mate. I know it's obviously a bunny of headache, obviously, getting this all together, but I imagine you'll outgrow this pretty quickly. Um, hopefully. That's, yeah. yeah, me and Rich, but that's, hopefully. Hopefully we outgrow this. Well, yeah. Uh, not too quick, really. I want to enjoy it for a little bit, but yeah, outgrow this and just keep growing, keep growing the brand, keep growing, growing the club. Yep. See what we can get, to be honest. Why not, so, mate? Yeah, open day, 30th. Come, Come down, come down, if you're in the area, which yes. would be cool. Um, right, let's get on to you then, mate. Obviously, in terms of sort of your your previous history and stuff like that, um, you are now obviously a brown belt, which is yes. cool. Um, competitive brown belt, I want to add as well. Not to, like I said, murky the waters or insult anyone in that. As no. I think, as we discussed earlier, that there's a difference between a competitive belt and or a competitor, you know, a belt range yeah. and like yeah, a yeah, hobbyist agreed. or something like that. <coughs> um, but. What's it been like, obviously, from the start? What got you into this to begin with? Um, what, jiu-jitsu completely? Yeah, um, so let's go back to white belt days. White belt days was Rich. So I started working with Rich, and Rich was sort of... Well, Rich was blue belt at the time doing jiu-jitsu. And he was sort of pestering me, like, oh, you should come along, you should come along. So I was playing football at the time. Uh position did you play football? Football, I was a right back. You were a little fast little bastard, were you? I was, yeah, I was pretty rapid, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. Still got the speed now, do you think? I've still got the speed, but the last time I actually tried to use it, I tore my hamstrings. So. <laughs> <laughs> played, played a charity match, I was like, I've still got the speed. Good. Two minutes later, hamstring popped. Oh. So yeah, not ideal. Um, but yeah, playing for the time, so he got me along, got into it. At the start, I was a bit like, yeah, I don't know. I used to have a weird thing about people touching my neck, which obviously in jiu-jitsu is not <laughs> ideal. I don't but think yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, got stabbed in the neck like, with like a plastic gun when I was really young. Playing fucking army with my mate. And then from then on, I had a weird thing about people touching my neck. Hated it. So I came to jiu-jitsu and someone started trying to choke me. And I was like, fuck this. Get yeah. off me. Like flashbacks and PTSD. Yeah, literally PTSD, Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, over time, obviously, you get fucking used to that. Because a white belt and blue belt, you spend a lot of time getting choked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, got over that. And then got into it and actually really enjoyed it for a while. Um, trained quite a lot. Got my blue belt, which was cool, and then trained quite a lot as well. And then obviously the blue belt blues kicked in, and we all know what that happens there. <laughs> so yeah, took a um, hiatus. How yeah, a little hiatus. Probably about two years. Really? I, I would train like train once a week, or I train twice a week, and then not train for two weeks, and basically got in a little huff. Decided to go to the gym, and I was like, "Fuck this!" I was getting massive. <laughs> <coughs> Basically, I was like, "Wait, wait, don't lie." <laughs> Basically, these are so, my friends. Yeah, so uh, went to yeah, fuck me for about two years, and then I don't know. I literally got bored. I think honestly, one day I was sat at my mum's house eating tuna and potato with salad then? cream at midnight, thinking, "What the fuck am I doing?" Like, never wanted to compete. But I'm just trying, kept trying to get massive for no reason. <laughs> it was like, what am I doing this for? It's pointless. Yeah. Uh, bit of an epiphany and decided to go back uh, doing some nogi because I was like, oh, maybe I'll enjoy that more. And that sort of got me back into it. And then suddenly I was like, actually, I do fucking love this. Jim hit the back burner and then sort of just went full jiu-jitsu. Is Rich going to be turning his grave that you came back to Nogi and you're like, oh, I love this now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, was that. Yeah, it got um, me back into But yeah, well, it's like the Nogi got me back into it. I was like, actually, I do really fucking like this. And then obviously put the gi back on and ended up loving both. Yeah. And then absolutely spam jiu-jitsu as much as I can ever since, to be honest. That's fair, right, mate. Interesting enough then, obviously, you had a previous history, obviously, of doing different sports, football, yeah. weight training, all that type of stuff and everything. Yeah. So, 
everyone likes to ask, obviously, you know, everyone will have a discussion like, oh, how can I look like Mark? How can I be like Mark? How can I do this type of stuff? You're I said, weirder. <laughs> be obsessed. <laughs> be militant. <Yeah>. Disregard <laughs> um, everything you everything. should think about. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think the biggest thing I say to him is that he's not just been he's not got this size just from doing jiu-jitsu no do you know what i mean yeah. and like i think for the viewers and listeners obviously of this is that i think they need to understand what, what was how much how big were you before you started jiu-jitsu let's start with that probably um well, well when i first started jiu-jitsu i was probably about ish 90 kilos still i was going to the gym loads training uh in the the, in my blue belt blues, when I decided I was going to go to the gym loads, I got up to I was 112 kilos at one point. Jesus. That was my biggest. I was strong as shit. Yeah, that was cool. Um, and then obviously when I got back to jiu-jitsu, obviously that started going down and down. And then I was like, actually, most of this is fucking useless because I gas out after two minutes. Crocker always used to say, as long as you could ride the wave of Mark's 30 seconds, <laughs> after that you'd be fine. <laughs> so yeah, I had like a strong 30 seconds in me. And then, uh, so yeah, obviously start trying to get rid of that, get the gas tank up. And it was weird. Like obviously before I was like, I want to be massive. I want to be fucking, you wake up in the morning. And you're like, I'm tiny. I'm C-bum. Where, where, where? Yeah, like I missed a meal and now I'm half the what's, size. What's that, meal? what's that meme at the moment with like Goggins? It's like, I think Dexter's laboratory is like, my, my master, I've let you down. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you only to see, but I'm like, oh, my master, I've let you exactly down. That. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was me. But um, the more I got into jiu-jitsu, the less I gave a fuck, really. Like, uh, and like I obviously said, I've been training for fucking years. I get people messaging me now, oh, mate, like, what's your training split? What do you do to like that? I'm like, well, go back and do 10 years of being obsessed with training mm. and then then you'll be around <laughs> like the point where I am. Yeah, that's fair. So what got you into the gym in the first place, mate, if you don't want me asking? Was it just the bodybuilding, see what I'm type of era? No, no, it's actually quite funny. So um, I was obviously playing football, used to like in, when I was a kid, football academies and whatnot, playing football fucking every single day. Uh, basically, I was at a football academy, wouldn't get in the fucking team and the team would go into uh, games. And so from then, if you didn't go for the game, you had to do work with either the physio or um, go in the gym, basically, or do extra work. So I go into the gym, started getting abs because I was skinny as fuck. And I was like, i got abs. I look mint. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just kept going to the gym loads, basically. And uh, yeah, fell in love with it that way. And then I started getting a bit stronger. And then I got into the team because I actually got strong. And it's funny. So then obviously, being a defender, I actually had a bit more uh, <coughs> size on me. I could shoulder barge people off the ball or not. So I was like, ah, oh, this works. So yeah. I kept going to the gym, kept playing football, and yeah, and just kept rolling like that. And then the gy- love for the gym never really stopped. Yeah, no, that's fine. After that, obviously, it started from just being purely vain, like most people it does. Start somewhere. Yeah, yeah, and then after that, you, um, I was like, actually, no, I actually do enjoy training. <laughs> and then, yeah, you can. Yeah, but there you go, put some perspective. Yeah. I, do you know what, there's one thing I, I didn't know about yourself, mate, actually, to be fair. The, where you were in football academies, mm. the structure, the the professionalism obviously around it to some mm. degree like even to the point where you weren't in the team it's like you're going to be doing something right do you yeah. think that's played a part in how well your jiu-jitsu career has gone to date so far uh yeah i yeah i suppose yeah i don't want to put um, words in your mouth it's not no yeah no it. um i that is one thing i thought when you were about this podcast there was one point i'll make my dad and i only understand it now of fucking you have to work hard and you have to do it every day if you want something. And I didn't understand that when I played football. And I think that's because I didn't care enough about football. He always used to say, like, if you want this, you need to work your dick off. And I did-ish, mm. but never fully. As in, like, if someone said, oh, like, do you want to come out on the weekend? I started doing, like, club promotions and shit. I was like, yeah, I'm going out, obviously. <laughs> Fuck football. I'm the kid you get everyone's yeah, messaging you know me. Like, so I'd, oh. like, I'd do the hard work maybe four days a week, and then the other three days a week... Uh, like I might not and that's why football didn't fucking work I wasn't as good as I thought I was yeah. and I think and then when I started jiu-jitsu and you actually hold on wait for it's alright sorry it. guys we basically got a security alarm which they can't figure out at the moment yes. but if, yeah, if no, you hear strong. it sporadically it's nothing yeah. to do with wrong. Um, your car's not going to blow up <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> end of gym <laughs> no. uh, yeah now I've started jiu-jitsu well not and I've started but when jiu-jitsu started going better it was like oh, it's because I'm actually putting in 100% now. Yeah. And then I understood, oh, yeah, that was what my dad always meant about football, but I didn't care enough about football to do it. Whereas now I do care enough and I will do that extra work. And, yeah, I think that's, that's come from him as now. Like, if you don't fucking work hard, you won't get anything. Did you get into football yourself or was it something your dad wanted you to do or family um, type of thing? No, I just, I just got into football just as 
kids do, I suppose. Just well, school, every kid up, is, yeah. Yeah, you end up playing football it. Like, my, dad, my dad's fucking football mad. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously you take me everywhere. He drives me fucking everywhere. Um, playing football, play football every day. On the weekend, I'd play like three or four games of three or four different fucking teams and he drives me everywhere. So, uh, yeah, like my dad loved me doing it and like so did my mum. They loved coming to watch. All my family did, really. But, um, yeah, I, d- I don't think they made me get into it. It was more of just, you're a kid, you end up playing sport and... Doing that and trying to do well yeah. at it. No, that yeah. Makes sense. So, a lot of it from sort of family driven type of thing. And I'm assuming, obviously, meeting or bumping into Rich and seeing yeah. his work ethos as well is in kind of like. Exactly that. Like, Rich works his dick off to be as good as he is, whether it is business or training or whatever. And yeah, definitely, I was like, ah, oh, right, well. And obviously, I work with him every day. So it's a bit like, ah, oh, right, I should probably have been doing that. And mm. yeah, it slowly gets instilled in you. And then, yeah, now we're both just as weird we work <laughs> yeah like I'll work my dick off yeah. like if someone said do you want to come do this no nah, I'm good I'm going to go to the gym and sit on a salt bike for half an hour because I'm the, weird but this, I, I, <laughs> yeah but I think it's the thing mate that a lot of people don't realise when again kind of like duh, don't ever talk about it but talk about it in a bad way type no. thing everyone always in, like oh, what's Mark doing what's, what's yeah. going on here and I said the thing is is that you do not see I'd say 90% of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes no with you. for sure like you're, I know you're not big on social media in the sense you'll post up obviously occasionally with different things yeah I'll post like because I, I, like, it's so it is weird because some people think I'm fucking addicted to Instagram but I fucking hate Instagram I mean like I, yeah. that, I have the same problem everyone <clears> thinks like you but, must love it I'm like no I literally yeah. as soon as I'm done with it I chop my phone in the fucking yeah honestly most away. like honestly most people I'm fucking muted unless, <laughs> unless you're unless you're putting up cool jiu-jitsu videos or a close mate I do not see your shit you're muted <laughs> like, otherwise I'm just there and I'm like oh fucking asshole yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't be asked um, but yeah like you said you, you've got to do it but yeah most of the yeah I'm, I'm always doing something I train every single morning every single night like up at six in the morning, go like, train a couple of hours. I spoil little things, mate. I'll Eat be like, oh, if he's at this, he's gone there this morning. Like, I yeah. think you were at Sweatbox, I think. Um, was it this morning or yesterday? Uh, yeah, yesterday morning. Yeah, yesterday yeah. morning. I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Like, and the thing is, I, I, pick, I see where you I dot around type yeah, stuff I, where, I, I like, get from other people's everywhere. profiles and things. Like this morning, so I knew I was doing this, so I couldn't train tonight. So I got up earlier. I trained twice this morning. And then when I finished work, I went and did cardio on the rower so I could have this. It wasn't a case of, ow, I'll miss a session because i got to yeah. do this. It's uh, cool. I'll make the time somewhere else. I'll make it back up and then we'll go again. Yeah, so I think I'll, I'll touch on this thing quickly. I think for people who aren't aware, I know at no point you ever asked for a handout to help progress your own jiu-jitsu career. And I think it's very admirable. And you have a full-time job and train like a full-time competitor. Yeah, I tr- yeah, I try my best. I'd say I'm like an extreme hobbyist. Like I still work eight hours a day in between all my training. I'd fucking love to do that full time. Train in the morning, go home, have a little nap, well, eat some you, food, you have a stretch. You never know, mate. Like. Well, yeah, you never know. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I work eight hours a day in between, every, in between all my sessions. Uh, yeah, I work five days a week. On the days off, obviously, I'm coaching. Still get all my training in. Um, and yeah, fuck asking for handouts. I think anyone who does is a knob. Well, I think it probably infuriates you seeing people <sighs> who, I don't know, train five times a week in the general classes type of thing mm. and thinking they're going to go far, which don't get me wrong, it's not to, like, again, as I say, destroy yeah. anyone's hopes and dreams, no. but like, oh, I can't do this. I need to do this full time. Yeah, thing. like, it's like okay. not knocking anyone. If, like, if that's what people want to do, is what does piss me off is people who have got better opportunities than me and don't grab it with both hands. That winds me up. Yeah. Like, if you've got the chance <clears throat> to be a full time athlete, whether it's jiu-jitsu or whatever sport you choose, and you're slacking, I'm like, you're a dickhead. Well, that's the thing. You, you don't see. understand, like, the opportunity you've got. Yeah, it's interesting, because you see some guys who, and girls, who are naturally talented. Yes. Right, and they get to that, I don't know, they're going through the, through the, as a kid, and they're doing really, really well. They get into the adult division. They're still good, but they're not the best in the adult division. And yeah. people say, oh, it's due to maturity. <clears throat> and because their natural talent's gotten that far, they just bank on it the whole fucking yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And you see it again at the professional rugby level or something like this, and you kind of go, what, how far would their potential be if they just went all in and just said, I fully agree. I think that's I, it. <laughs> like, yeah, some people need a kick up the ass, if I'm honest. Yeah. A lot, well, I think a lot of people do. Um, and like, yeah, like you said, people bank and people are like, oh, it'll be all right. It'll be all right until it's not all right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then it starts to like, slowly decline off. I'll be honest, like myself, at the start of this year, I don't think I was working hard enough and went to a tournament, didn't get the result I wanted and that was a kick up the ass. I was like, 
Oh shit. Yeah, actually I think we were, we, we were chatting yeah. about what your schedule was going to look like throughout the year and I genuinely think it was like four major competitions across the whole year I think is what mm. you like hide at the time type yeah. day and then I think you just said earlier you're competing every month now. <laughs> yeah, so I've um, so sort of started the year I couldn't, so had an operation in January so couldn't train for like two months and then a month to get back into it so I did compete for three months and then I've competed every month since a couple, couple of times some months like this month of um, fought twice and then yeah every month to the end of the year as well I'm trying to like, make back up the time <laughs> basically getting the results at the same time as well mate which is the cool thing yeah um, thank you so yeah, I know obviously not some of the matches haven't gone always your way and I know not always yeah. I've joked a few times on a few other podcasts about your opponent staring across you at the mat in the Dublin and going I ain't fighting him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think my first message to you did you have your top off mate <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck it. if you can ask for misses I was fucking fuming <laughs> mate, I could tell even the picture of you saying I'm trying to be honest with my default goal oh, here. Your mate. face just said a thousand words. Just literally just sat like, around for six hours like, come on then, one fight, let's fucking do this. Let's have it. Got in the bullpen, hopped around, sweaty. You're like, oh God, I feel fucking good. Headphones are off. I'm like, I'm having this. It's fucking going. Bloke comes over. Yeah, he, he's not coming to the bullpen, mate. You're like, you fucking what? Uh, <laughs> I just saw him 20 minutes ago. What do you mean <laughs> he's not coming to the fucking bullpen? Uh, Oh, yeah. My missus literally left me alone for like a good hour. I was just storming around the place like, dickhead, fucking dickhead. Uh, yeah, she was like, you all right? Should we go now? I'm like, yeah, all right. It's like a kid who didn't get a toy in his Happy Meal. Yeah, literally. It went and sank. Oh. Fucking like 45 pints of Guinness and then I was felt right. Yeah, a bit normal again. I mean, that's the hardest part of my job is when speaking to any of you guys if it's not the result you wanted. It's like I try and try and pick the time frame of when to message you yeah. afterwards because okay? <laughs> yeah. how did you feel on the lead up to it? Because I still need to try and get that little bit of information yeah. from you to be like, I know it wasn't the result you wanted, but how did you feel? And it's just like, I don't, I, I'm not stupid enough to do it instantly after the match. Yeah. Actually, to be fair, with um, good old Shane's match, I did I see how sad we were, both me and Tom. Yeah. We were both watching yeah. Smooth yeah. Cog. Yeah. Couldn't even watch it live. We're like, refresh, refresh. refresh. What's going yeah. on? Oh, he's done two Fuck minutes now. It's all going well. And it was just, yeah. yeah. But um, we'll move on from that one. In a bit, so I don't want the outcome. But to be fair, yeah. it's, um, that started a nice relationship with you guys, to be fair. Obviously, yeah, you guys yeah, obviously yeah, were chatting away, yeah, that yeah. type of stuff, some, which is cool. Some bloke. Um, and I know, obviously, I don't know, obviously, you can say stuff, but obviously, mm. you could help with some stuff in the future as well, which is really, really cool. So, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, we we spoke loads and planned to go up and train with yeah. him, so yeah, I, yeah, no, none at all. Nah, obviously, good. he was at Grapple Fest, wasn't he? Because um, uh, Paul, PGJ coach Paul, was yeah, fighting, yeah, cool. so I was chatting to Grapple first. So. Yeah, it's good, yeah, it's good to see that yeah. community and how nice it is. Everyone just gets someone. Yeah, I I, to be fair, me and him have the same conversation. I think um, I don't know, we've got to be best mates, but it pisses me off when some people try and make it like it's not MMA or not even MMA. That sometimes it doesn't happen. That it's not WWE. We don't all need to be there like shouting at each other. You're this, you're that. Like, like fuck, we're grappling. Yeah, calm down, isn't it? Let's have a, have it's a fight like, yeah. and then like we'll be mates after do you yeah know what I mean? no, exactly no one got right. punched in the head it's all right no just someone just woke up on that that was it maybe well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah unless you get chosen for conscious and maybe get up and call him a cunt but yeah apart <coughs> from that it's, it, i still get the mate of flashbacks i think it's sort of, um it's always when you see the heel hooks go too far and they just like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Of them, like match and it says pop and you're like it was it was it yorkshire gripper he was talking about it like uh, was it Monday rants? Oh yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Basically, if it, but yeah, if you don't tap this, that's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, well, at the end of the day, it's going to happen, type of thing. Yeah, Sorry, you, complete tangent on that. One. No, but yeah, no, but I fully agree. <laughs> it is. And at the end of the day, if you're going to compete at a professional level, get prepared for professional results. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> basically, um, which makes sense. Um, yeah. Let's go on to, as you mentioned, you've moved up and down in weight and stuff like that. Yeah. And obviously one of the things that people struggle with is with the local competitions and big competitions is managing that weight. Yeah. Now, I know obviously I've only worked with you for the last what, year and a half and stuff like that. We've yes. done a few different things, yeah, day before, the same day, all that yeah. type of stuff, which is cool. Um, how have you found it previously, mate? Um, and let's talk about like white belt comp, first comp there. What was that like for you? Did you go in the, the easy bracket and you didn't have to do any weight manipulation at all or weight movement? Or? Yeah, I, f I think, no, I think I did. I just... At the time, I was like 91 or something, and I thought heavy weight was under 94, so that was fine. I was I had absolutely no energy, because obviously you and me have spoke before, from when I was doing bodybuilding, I just act like a bodybuilder still, even though I was doing jiu-jitsu. So I'm there like, protein, 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 protein. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, wondered why I was I had absolutely no energy. energy. So until I started working with you, and I really like, ah, oh, right. Okay. I actually started eat. doing things <laughs> properly. Yeah. Ah, okay, now I've got more energy. Yeah, now I'm 
running around like a fly on shit. So. Was it Jaffa Cakes with you, I think it was? Oh yeah, I fucking love Jaffa Cakes. Yeah, Absolutely that was bollocks. Bollocks. It's yeah. always a, It's always a food group. I start working with someone, they're like, I can have this, I'm like, yes, yeah, you can. And you're right. like, Jesus Christ, yeah, Jaffa all the Jaffa Cakes. cakes. Squeeze yogurt Ooh, yeah. on top. Nice. Well, like for anyone, massive ice gem. <laughs> I tell you now, you Try it. <laughs> <laughs> everything you did, your food options that we gave you, mate, every time I like, I think I saw a picture of one of your breakfasts once, and no word of a lie, like you said, your presentation skills were horrific. Oh, it's fucking horrific at cooking, like, yeah. And I think, what was it, we're talking about Romain Lansford in the sense of like blending all the fucking food up and just fucking chugging yeah. it. Like, oh, I said you- a quick word about one of our sponsors, Grappler's Soap. The team wanted to find, right, the best possible defense against skin infections, which normally we get from each other or off the mass. This, in turn, led Dan and the team into researching more about soaps and essential oils, which turns out has been used for thousands of years, actually, as a natural defense against infection during the plague. Slight twisted story here, but grave robbers in England knew of the power of essential oils and smothered themselves in it before exhuming and stealing corpses. Useless fact of the day for you there. But Dan and the team had tried several soaps before, but none of them just simply wowed them. So he started to make his own. Months more research, trial and error led to finally this golden nugget, grappler soap, which you'll be pleased to know the recipe is CPR registered and approved by pharmacists. The use of a specific method to lock in the amazing natural smell, no cheap fragrances used here, which means the soap and use smell great and stand the best chance of staying healthy. Although the soap was developed for grapplers alike, it is now widely being used by non-grapplers. And Dan is always like delighted to hear from from customers about how it's cleared up dry and itchy skin or relieved eczema or just simply made you feel f-ing awesome. The smell alone has been a massive hit with men and women alike. So enough nuffle for now. Go and get yourself some now at www.mrbassets.com or go check out their Instagram page for some very funny memes at Grapplers Soap. Thank you, guys. Still, I always start working. I was like, I'm a fucking robot. Tell me what to eat and I'll eat it. It might not look nice, but I'll uh, get it done. Right. You, basically, yeah, that was when uh, you were giving me, like, nice fried... It was basically like a, a healthy fried, fried breakfast. Yeah, basically, it? yeah. Yeah, and I was making that. And, like, first one I made it, I was like, yeah, you got your sausages, your tomato, your beans. Yeah, that looks proper. Fucking weekend, it's just mushed. <laughs> <laughs> Blend it. Literally looked like a fucking can of dog food, didn't it? But it was all cooked and I ate it, and that was that. Oh, mate, yeah. my, what's that picture you see, like a can roast dinner? And it's mate, like, it was oh. literally like, yeah, it was like a full breakfast in a can, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, vile. But, yeah, but, yeah. Like you I get said, it down. Opened your eyes up a little bit, which is nice too, which is cool. Yeah, um, sure. And yeah, definitely been funny with some of the meals. I know, obviously, notoriously known for uh, the pizza, pizza, pizza crumpet, fucking crumpets. crumpets. Those if you the haven't ones. had pizza crumpets, you need to get. Oh, we had one guy who was doing it at the moment. He says he didn't get on well with the cheese. I'm like, what's going on? Like, get everyone... on well with the cheese. <laughs> we have to switch over to pizza. What you need bar. is you need the crumpet, and then you need a few like mixed herbs or a bit of basil, a bit of salt, a bit of, a bit of garlic. <laughs> Fucking maybe a couple of tomatoes, cheese. Oh, fucking hell. It's literally like four small pizzas for breakfast. What more could you want? Exactly, mate. That's what we try and do. Yeah. Um, what was I going to talk about then? I completely forgot. So you fought at 90, just under 91.4 or your 91 type of thing. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, yeah, white belt. I went, then moved up. So I fought heavy. Then the next time I fought, was, actually, I fought white belt heavy a few times. Then I fought heavy at blue belt. And then I had a little hiatus. And then when I came back and fought Ultra a couple of times. How was that? Uh, yeah, it was, all, it was all right, to be fair. Because luckily, the guys I was fighting were just fat and useless. <laughs> Whereas I was like, actually had a bit of muscle to me. But um, You could just run around, mate. You'd be fine. Well, no, I couldn't <laughs> run because I was out of breath myself. <laughs> so it was basically, it was like, well, I'm out of breath and you're fat, so who's going to win? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's like, Deep breathing on top of a side control, yeah? Yeah, basically. <laughs> obviously, we were all shit, but... Um, yeah, ultra, and then cut down. I think I cut all, nearly all the way to heavy again. Yeah, I think, and then ended up going back up to super, super and then ended up chilling at super. Yeah, and then obviously now I fought ninety, ninety-five, or under hundred. Yeah, either, I still, I'm, or, I'm still trying to pressure him to do a yeah, 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 UCC, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. still planting the seed. Shreds. Still, it's still trying to grow. Um, uh, but we'll see. It is in there. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Absolute monster, I think. But yeah. um, <laughs> that's interesting. So when you obviously shifted down um, again, like I said, no judgment in the slightest bit. Mm. Was it just again chicken, bro- broccoli, rice, lots of cardio, that type of thing to get back down to from obviously from ultra down to heavy? Or what yeah, I was just I was dieting. I was hungry all the fucking time. Um, like yeah, like I said, I wasn't like mixing my meals out. I wasn't having. They weren't spaced out right. There weren't enough carbs in whatever. I was just in my head. I was like right. 
bodybuilding style, let's get lean. So yeah. I was getting lean rather than losing. Obviously, that makes no sense. But I like I was aiming to get lean rather than lose weight. If yep. that makes sense. Whereas now, if I go down, I'm going to obviously you get lean in the process. But <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? That you know what I'm trying to say. Like yeah. yeah. So I yeah I was hungry all the fucking time. But um, yeah, how does it? Crazy. How did the jujitsu at the time? If you reflect back on it, do you think it got impacted slightly with it? Especially as you said there was more bias to protein content. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Gas tank was terrible. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But like I might have like pushed through it a lot, but yeah, gas tank was shit. Yes, I know, I know you've got a great mindset. That's what I was going to mention. Yeah. I always get people, when people say, like, what can I be to be a good client? I said, if you can be anything like Mark. And I go, what do you mean by Mark? I'm like, if I tell Mark to go and find a east, northeasterly wind and stand on one of the <laughs> his next second meal, then, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Because um, I know Mark will be there. <laughs> yeah, fucking right. <laughs> yeah, well, Standing outside I like a flamingo. I said to you before, if you're going to go to someone for help and they help you and they tell you to do something, fucking do it. Yeah. There's nothing more annoying than when someone asks for your help and you tell them something and they don't do it. I'm like, I just wasted breath. Yeah. And like I said, if I follow you like a robot and it don't work, I can be like, Jay, you're full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> but if I follow it to the now, and I'm like, oh, oh that worked. Oh, shit up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why would you not follow it? Why, like, why would you not be a robot? I, and not only that, it's a thing of people need, like, it's food at the end of the day. I see food as fuel. Don't, yeah. go, don't go wrong, I love food. But at the end of the day, it's fuel. So if you can't be a fucking adult, and just eat what you're told. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you need to have spaghetti on toast with fucking letters in it because you're a child, then grow up. Yeah, in, in, you know I, mean? I think like I said, it's very hard for me in terms of trying to manage people's expectations on what they're going to get. And I think uh, it's definitely taken me a little while to learn that some people respond diff to different methods, right? Yeah, I yeah, think, yeah no, I'm sure they do. I'm, I'm not saying everyone's no, 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 like no, me, I'm like I'm a weirdo. But. No, it's from my, my, my point of view more so <clears> is that obviously where I want people to understand nutrition for their own well being in the sense that. I don't want you to be texting me on a Saturday night going like, what the fuck do I do here? Yeah. I kind of want you to be able to put two and two together and learn from the process and kind of go, right, this is going to work well. Yeah. Um, I think from one of the learning experiences I had was trying to get everyone to do this, all right, you're going to understand nutrition. Sometimes it's the case of they just need a structure Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I think it should be taught in schools, nutrition, because if you talk to most people, really? like, they haven't got a fucking clue. Like, you know the old Mean Girls thing? Is butter yeah. a carb? Yeah. Like, people have no idea. <laughs> nah, like, I, I, in my day-to-day um, -day job, I'm a barber, and I'll be cutting hair, and somebody chats me, oh, I bet, I bet you eat really well. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, I do. And they're like, well, I bet all you eat is like chicken and veg. I'm like, no. And cheesy comfits for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, are you, what are you on about? And I just uh, nailed two squares bars a minute ago. But I know there's what I know you got. Like, one, I know you got one customer who I think when the last time I got my hair cut with you was talking about intermittent oh, fasting, fasting and then was going out for yeah. a meal like, uh, and this. You're like, well, that's right. Told me to do like seven day fast. What are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm just going for food. Yeah. Right, uh, okay. Right, then, well, it's day four, so that's not a seven day fast. <laughs> and I think, I think the, the time before that, they were doing keto, I think it was beforehand as well, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, apparently so he got like, into keto overnight, he drank a drink, all oh, right. So. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, nutrition, like, people's, people have got a fucking clue, have they? No, mate. Like, you are, like, I get people ask me, they're like, oh, I'm like, trying to put on weight, trying to put on some muscle, and I'm like, oh, like, how much are you eating? Well, I don't know. Right, okay, <laughs> so, like, so like, what are you eating? Well, like, I mean, porridge for breakfast, then I had a sandwich at lunch. And then I went over and had like, it was a chicken and rice. And I'm like, so you probably barely ate 2,000 calories yeah. and you're trying to put a muscle. Like, yeah. I... And then what gets even worse about it, so I know obviously we both follow um, Big Pal Nasty, yes. right? It's like, he didn't just wake up one morning like, Mom, Fucking what the fuck's happened? If you haven't, <laughs> someone, you need to go on Big Pal Nasty's Instagram and watch it. I, or it might be a story, but hopefully it's, he's got it on there. Uh, he really just describes their new equipment down there, mate. Yeah, it's fucking brilliant, yeah. I bet um, he's, not muted, he's not muted on your profile. No, he's, <laughs> funny, he's funny as fuck. But like, yeah, exactly that. He's like, I didn't just wake up massive one day. Like, no one's ever accidentally got big. Like, you know when people... Oh, like, I want to go to the gym and tone up. I want to get too big. Yeah, I don't want to get too big. I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, that's never happened. <laughs> no, was that, like, what's he said? I didn't wake up one morning and go, fuck, I'm massive. Mom, I'm massive. <laughs> like, it's never happened. I think you said the same thing when someone said about like, eating much food and they, they taught me to describe their diet, as you said. And you're like, yeah. I had two fans. like, okay, you were talking about this one time that you tried to do, I don't know, a Bear Grylls challenge type thing yeah. and try to eat all the food and then that was just on the one Saturday. What did you have on the Monday? Well, I didn't have much. I was like, I was like really full. I was like, yeah. well, you're not going to gain size. Like, well, the best one is what well, I'm on the protein shakes. Yeah. <laughs> on the protein you're, you're on the what? <laughs> yeah, uh, then you're on a protein shake which probably got like 100 calories in a scoop, yeah. and because you had two, you think you're going to put on muscle. And then they'll they'll go down the mass gainer route, and their shits will fucking sparks and sparks will just 
be yeah, horrific. And they'll get fucking horrible sugar fucking spikes. They'll end up eating 95 grams of chocolate instead. And then on top of that, then they'll realise how much it costs to keep that going. They'll oh, yeah. Like the sure. bag will you actually like a week, basically. And then, the then obviously scoop. they'll start putting in the creatine, so then yeah. they'll get serious. Yeah. <laughs> and then it'll be like, ah, oh, it's, it's the high, high rep range I'm doing. Let's go to low reps now. Yeah, yeah start on that. It's so. No one can just. And not only that, if someone, if you pick one of these stupid things that you've seen some asshole on Instagram do, at least stick to it for like a couple of months and yep. give it a good try. When people are like, oh, I'm trying this, and then I speak to them a month later, oh, I'm doing this now, I'm like, well, what was the fucking point in doing it? You yeah. did it for four weeks. What do you think? Your body's just suddenly going to be like, boom, I'm massive, or yeah. boom, I'm strong, or oh, I'm shredded. Like, if, it do, if it does happen, overnight. let us know, because we've been yeah, trying to figure this out for a long time. And we'll sell it, <laughs> and we'll make loads. <laughs> but that's the, I think that's the biggest thing with everything, mate, is consistency. And that, that honestly, that word just gets around in everywhere in life, mm. yeah? You want to be yep. a good writer, be fucking consistent at fucking mm. writing. Want to be good at podcasting, be consistent with it. Want to be good at jiu-jitsu, be fucking consistent with it. Like, yeah. You want your body to change, be consistent with your diet, be consistent with your training. training and if I wouldn't, if I liked football more, be consistent with football, I might have done better in it, but I didn't. Like, Mate. yeah, consistency everywhere. If you don't, you get fuck all. I mean, I'm going to take the piss. I guarantee with the football, the hamstring injury, we'd have been over there in the pub and you'd be always going, oh, I could have made Premier League. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd be one of those dickheads sat there in my fucking tracksuit on my Saturday team like, whoa, yeah, I could have made it, but no, I just played two station and it get yeah. 30 quid. So. Yeah, I got a good And I just had 10 points of Stella, so now I've spent all my wages. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, it's just so many of them. No one wants it's to be that mental. Guy. But, um, yeah, consistency, obviously, is the biggest thing when it comes yeah. to it and the diet stuff, like I said. I was, um, when you, when we both started talking first about about working with each other and that yeah. type of stuff. I was a little bit always apprehensive because when I come, when I get people who have come from a background of structure, mm. I'm like, what else can I bring to the table with it? Because yeah. not saying nutrition has to be over complex and it can be straightforward for the majority of people. It can do. Sport yeah. performance is a few little details that we kind of chucked in there, which is good. Like mm. the good old days of base running lean, which you were introduced Fucking to. Love it, right? um, yeah. And we've had some funny stories of other people trying it as well. Yeah. Which is a <laughs> shout out to Andy. <laughs> do you want to tell that story? <laughs> Yeah, and he started taking beta alanine. So if you don't know, when you take beta alanine, sometimes you get like a bit of like crawling skin for 30 seconds or something when it starts kicking in. Um, I just got a phone call from a friend. Mate, my skin's tingling. I'm just trying to get beta alanine. Is this supposed to happen? What have I done wrong? I was like, no, no, Andy, that's fine. That is supposed to happen. He's like, oh, oh okay. Bye, mate. <laughs> <That was the laughs> yeah, good shit. That was the prep for his Euros, I think. It yeah, was. that was, was awesome. it. I, was like, I yeah. trained with Ali this morning. Fuck Did you? Yeah. How's he doing? Has he, has he got, he's got, uh, no, it's oh, sorry, sorry, Ollie got his black belt, didn't he? Obviously, Andy. Ollie, yeah, 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 Ollie did, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, no, uh, Andy's brown belt, same as me. But yeah, yeah. training this morning. Love training with uh, uh, he's good, mate. He loves his, like, he, well, I always give him credits. He taught me Williams guard for the Omoplata, which I find mm. is just way more successful than just your standard yeah, Omoplata. Fuck, he loves yeah, doing that shit. Yeah, it does. Basically, yeah, he's to be a tent well planet. away from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he should. Tent planet would be right up his street. It would be. Um, <coughs> we talked obviously about diet. Is there any crazy diets that you've done in the past before, other than the bodybuilding, or have you been pretty lucky? You know, what I'm being touched on. I don't know. I had uh, the joys of being told sweet potato has high metabolism, but in fact, it still is eating oh, yeah. a, a kilo oh. a day of that. Diet Coke. I think I read in some shit muscle fucking magazine once. Diet Coke. When you drink Diet Coke every day. A can every day or something breaks up the fat in your belly. Oh, does it? Yeah, and then so you can burn the fat in your belly more, and the abs will come out. <laughs> I fucking drank a diet coke can every day for fucking oh, months. <laughs> 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 that shit was legit. Um, yeah, that was when I was at six form. We had like shitty corner shop, and every day I'd be walking to the corner shop. I'm gonna get my fucking diet coke. Yeah, I'm gonna get my abs. I'm gonna start. <laughs> out. Oh man. Yeah, I did that shit for a while. Jesus. Christ. I'm mm. trying to think of anything else. Like, mate, I went through a phase of only drinking soup and liquids. I was like, how can liquid turn into a physical object? Like body fat. So I'd like to drink soup for like two weeks. Wow, well, that, that was, so that was shite. a yeah. Yeah. Shite. yeah, luckily, I might haven't been that bad. Apart, like Diet Coke was a bit ridiculous, but I just I like Diet Coke anyway, so that was right. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong after a hard fucking open mat again. A Coke, a, a can of Coke Zero. Oh like, yeah, Coke Zero is the bollocks now. Just incredible. I like, literally so happy with that. Yeah. Type of thing. Fucking right. Well, uh, enough about the nutrition stuff. Let's get more Sorry. into the juicy. Nah, mate, it's like I said, it's the nutrition podcast at the day, so yeah. nothing you're doing wrong there in the slightest bit. Uh, let's talk about then, obviously, competitions and things. I know, yeah. obviously, this year you've competed loads. Not everything's gone your way. I know, obviously, no. some have been some shitty decisions, which I think we've all agreed with in terms of that yeah. type of stuff. 
any memorable moments so far? Obviously, other than probably minus Grapple Fest out of that question, uh, Glass Grapple Fest out of that question, probably. But uh, yeah, Glass Grapple Fest was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Um, to be fair, fighting on a beach a couple of weeks ago, that was quite cool. Oh, yeah, Subs on the Sand. How, how was that? Subs on the Sand. It was actually a really, really cool event. Is, um, first got there, and I was like, what the fuck is this? But then, yeah, it was also like stadium built on a, not stadium, platform, <laughs> fucking stadium. It was massive. There were 70,000 people there. I get it. I'm kind of yeah. a big deal. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> one time in Weymouth. Yeah, uh, yeah, they built like a platform. It was cool. It was on the beach. Apart that wind would blow every now and then. You get a bit of sand in your mouth. But apart from that, it's fine. But yeah, it was quite cool. And then, yeah, I went straight on there. So you got pissed after. So yeah, that was cool. But yeah, obviously, um, Grapple Fest, yeah, that was massive. That's um, what could do. Yeah, taking that, uh, like, a couple of weeks out. Um, yeah, getting the win um, and style, which was quite cool. Cooling it out with you before, which was quite funny as well. Yeah. It was a bit shit house It was <laughs> lovely. Um, yeah, no, that was good. Um, to be honest, mate, just getting back in the fucking competing. Um, English Open was cool. Drove up there on... Well, I did drive up there. I got a fucking National Express on the Friday morning. <coughs> um, yeah, you just did the trial set, which I don't think. We yeah, yeah. Guys. So yeah, for the English Open, obviously. How, how did that work? So did they? Did you have to apply for it? Was that right? Or uh, yeah. Work? So basically, it was. Um, so they had the pro category on the Saturday, mm. uh, the eight-man bracket, and you had to. There was uh, two spots, so you had to qualify to earn your way into the mm. pro category of all the big guys. Um, so they went up on the Friday morning, got the National Express up at six in the morning, whatever the fuck it was. Also, I landed on with Todd for a bit. Yeah, went there, did the qualifying tournament, managed to qualify, won that. Um, did you, what was it, win every match or points or that? How did that, that work? Yeah, uh, sub points. And then, in, so in, into the final, so we both walked on and they raised both of our hands. Like, you both qualified. So we thought we were all fighting for one spot. Turns out we were fighting for two. Oh, wow. So we got to the final and then you um, walk in and raise your hands, raise both hands. I was like, oh, fucking mint. So what, you didn't did even <coughs> beat him, fight him? No, so we didn't have to fight the final. We both, yeah, quite, we both looked at each other like, oh, awesome, we both qualified. <laughs> Fist bump, let's fuck off. Oh, uh, which was cool because I was fucked anyway, both my ankles and knackered. Oh, so. mate, I remember that. I think I remember texting you saying, I know you said one ankle was fucked at the time. Yeah, one was. ankle was fucked on the way up. And then on the first fight, my other ankle went. Yeah. So, yeah. I was right. literally it's, fucked. It's stupid little things I ended up texting you guys. I'm like, are you sure you were probably aware of this already? But like, don't don't wear one ankle brace because like in, the, yeah. in my head I'm there, like, like, both, like, we're both were strapped heavily. And it was lucky because when the other one went, I'm pretty sure the strapping held it together. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I got a horrible that video. I've literally you can hear my ankle just go. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, it's fine now, but yeah. I was about uh, to say, I've been awkward, like, if you actually beat the opponent and he raised his hand as well at the same time, you're like, what the fuck? No, oh, hold no, on. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm just beating this yeah, guy and giving him a spot. spot. Yeah. <laughs> so then, yeah, I went to my shitty hotel, which was awful. That was the most depressing hotel in the world. Uh, um, Mrs. actually drove up and met me that night, so then I was texting you. Filled up on oh, yeah. food. What, what were you eating? Literally yeah. FaceTiming with the breakfast bar. I think yeah. it was at the yeah, time. Yeah, it was the worst hotel ever. And I was literally like, Jay, look at this shit I've got to deal with. What am I eating? Um, but yeah, uh, stayed there. And then obviously the next day went and did the, uh, the pro category for the English. That was cool. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, fuck me, that hotel was bad. I'm still a bit depressed by it, actually. Oh, man, I'd be honest, actually, like, I didn't know if Beth was going up there or not. I was, like, contemplating, like, again, like, having that conversation with the wife, like, yeah. i got to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll be back in a few hours. Yeah, Bye. Yeah, she came, <laughs> yeah, look, other, honestly, that hotel, it was, um, so it's a travel lodge in the middle of fucking nowhere, some asshole end of London. And it was one of the ones, basically, when people, like, all the people, when the rents were going up and they couldn't afford their houses and we'd been booted out by landlords, oh, the wow. council were putting them all into this shitty travel lodge I was in. Fucking bless them, it was horrible. So, like, I'm in this hotel, like, yeah, I'm, like, down for this competition and that, like, spending money in there, thinking, look, and there's all these families there, like, oh, shit, I ended up chatting to this old bloke, he's like, yeah, I lost my house, um, I'm here with the wife and kids, blah, blah, I'm, honestly, I felt so bad, I literally walked to the fucking uh, reception desk, gave us some money, I was like, can you buy him a few pints of Stella, please, because he's had a <laughs> terrible day, and then I got back in Chris from the fucking energy, went upstairs, and I was like, don't go down there, babe, that was so depressing, it was oh, awful. God. Yeah, so then you just hid in the room basically until the next day. Uh, but it was a cheap hotel, so fuck it. It was a job, mate. Like I said, it got you, like I said, a bit yeah. more exposure. Like yes, you said, for hanging sure. with the big boys. Obviously, how was that? How was that moment? I think I joked to you at the time, sort of like being mm. in the bullpen going, I bought one of your fucking videos before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. No, it was like that was a bit of a um, realization. I was like, oh, right, cool. I can actually hang with some of the, some of the bigger names. Sound. Like, it gave me a kick up the ass, to be honest. And then yeah. since then, I. I wouldn't say since then, but yeah, it was like um, yeah, confidence boost of like, ah, you can do this, like, gave me a bit more confidence and then, yeah, just carried on. Yeah, mate. Now. Been on a tear up ever since, to be fair. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's been good. which has been really cool. I think it's, been good. Good. it's nice to see you, like I said, put the hard work in, get the actual response that is obviously mm. needed from that. And again, I appreciate obviously it wasn't the result you wanted out of that show, but even yeah. then... I think though, it was the one I sort of needed. Yeah, if that makes sense. I think the, the pleasing thing for me, mates, I imagine in that moment it could be deer in headlights type thing. Mm. Of like, oh fuck, I'm, I'm facing this person. That, yeah, that could have been the other thing. I could have gone there, gone absolutely bent up sideways, and then I would have been like, ah, yeah, I'm not as good as I thought. There's, levels to, there's even more levels. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And, um, and it didn't. So I was like, ah, cool. Yeah, let's keep this going. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's work a bit harder and let's get to that next level. And then, yeah. So I think you're moving in the right direction. I think, Go like I there. said, I genuinely feel that in a few years to come that, that you'll be one of the main names within the UK. Right? I think Thank you're you. certainly representing the Southwest and the South pretty, pretty Fucking standing right. by there. A few yeah. guys, a few good guys in the Southwest. We're all doing our bit. We're pushing it as much as we can. Yeah. We're getting there. Um, yeah, especially it's a lot quieter down here. So yeah, I don't know why. It's not as if there's not enough clubs. No, like, there's plenty of fucking clubs, just not a lot of noise. So I don't, like, there's not many people who are willing to put in the shifts of driving all over the place and yeah. competing everywhere and taking what they can and doing the extra bits. But yeah, we've got a few guys that are now. So uh, yeah. yeah, rep the sure Southwest. Good, mate. Like I said, I'll, I'll, we're coming up. This is, one of, up. this is one of the issues that we have where it's like, oh, we want to see this person. Where are they? Sunderland. Oh, yeah. God. Fuck I. Like, <laughs> like, I don't want to drive away that, uh, that way. We're doing no one wants to drive there. Luckily, I've got a mate who's a fucking legend. And ah, I'm like, Josh. mate, yeah, <laughs> Josh Box, shout out. Fucking number one. He's, yeah, I can't thank him enough. He's a fucking legend. I'm like, mate, I got a competition or I got an invitational show in the ass end of fucking nowhere. <laughs> Draw a go. He's like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. I'll pick up at eight. I'm like, sound. <laughs> <laughs> then off we fuck. I'm just convinced you won't get in my car anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you fuck driving with you, you're scary. You drive far too quick, I'm a little granddad. No, mate, I don't drive quick, my car's quick, that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is first gear? Yeah, it is. I just think I was in your car for a mile, you scared me to death. I know, mate. I just, I've never seen so much panic on your face ever. For I was like, air brake, air brake, what's going on? Like, for everything I was like, Jay, you... Jay, that light's red. That light's red, that light's red! <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, mate. Like, for what you do and, like, what, yeah, the way you carry yourself, I've never seen so much fear in my life. Oh, mate, I'm really <laughs> shit like that. Even this is, she oh. drives quick. I'm like, will you pack it in? <laughs> Trying to grab the hand. Yeah. Really, like, what's going on here? Honestly, people, uh, people are like, oh, well, you don't like going quick, but you'll have a fight. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> At least I got some control in that. Going yeah. quick, I got fucking done. Um, one thing I want to touch on, obviously, we went on the nutrition uh, kind of spectrum with stuff. Yeah. Um, let's talk about training because, again, I don't think a lot of people would presume, mm. yeah, you're probably in the gym, weight training, mm. five, six times a week type yeah, thing, no. which I know the more. answer to this already, but when, how has <clears> that <throat> weight training sort of changed over the years? Like, um, yeah, obviously, I used to go to the gym loads, and that's when I built, like, the, uh, yeah, well, all of my muscle, actually. I've probably built no muscle in the last couple of years, if anyone have lost it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I used to go to the gym all the time, whereas now it's my main focus is jiu-jitsu, so everything I do around it is to help jiu-jitsu. Yep. And I'm not going to get better at jiu-jitsu if I spend six nights a week in the fucking gym trying to get massive. That's not going to help. Yeah, like everyone says to me, oh, I bet you go to gym loads. No, I don't. I do two weight sessions a week. That's mm. it. Which obviously is completely different. If you're a newbie and you've not been in the gym, doing two sessions a week isn't going to build you the body you want or get you the strength you want or whatever. I've like done the hard work before and now I'm sort of keeping it going and making it more beneficial for jiu-jitsu. So I do two full body sessions of weights and that's it. And we've got like all my main compounds in, obviously. Uh, I do a long cardio piece, a short interval cardio piece and a light, like conversational cardio piece, which is like basically a sort of like, do, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah do fuck all really. I just sit there watching Jiu Jitsu on my phone. Shock. Uh, yeah, shock. <clears throat> and I'll do that at some god awful time in the morning or after another session where I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'll quickly go to the gym, do half an hour. Um, that, and then apart from that, I'm in the, I train Jiu Jitsu. I'm training train Jiu Jitsu. Teach it, train it. Yeah, teach it, train it. I'm, I basically I do Jiu Jitsu at least, at least once a day, always, yeah. Mo mostly two. It's usually gym, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu, or it'll be uh, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu gym. <laughs> do, you to, do you want to give the equivalent of that from the nutrition spectrum? So what's your diet like? Uh, well, yeah. I'll have a fish. Yeah, yeah, and a fish kick. and a rice kick. And, and then, then a bit more fish. That is literally me. <laughs> 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 You're training. Yeah, so. that is literally me. I'm also weirdo as well. Like, I'll be, I'm the one sat at home. 
I've not done enough today, or I've not done enough this week. I, that is the, oh. as much as it's shit, it's also, I'm like, oh, I mate. enjoy the mindset of, I'll fucking go and work hard. I'd rather beat myself up for not working hard enough i be sat at home thinking, fucking nailed it this week, didn't hey, I? But that's that real, where that is that uh, American <coughs> football coach. You yeah. Said, lazy people think they've done enough. Always, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, as soon and as the you hard start thinking that as well, that's when you lose still shit. contemplating, I haven't done, like, uh, yeah. haven't done enough. In like, the first fuck place. me, don't get me wrong, I've woken up in the morning and been like, I ache everywhere. What the fuck am I doing? Go to bed. You miss his sleep and you're like, oh, put it on the fucking, just go to the gym. But you go and fucking do it and then you get the rewards. Yeah, and, I, 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 and you're now working that way up those ranks. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, like, yeah. Well, yeah, that's my plan. That's, well, that's, it's happening, mate. Yeah, like, you can't say it's to. a plan. You're you're you're, you're, yeah, yeah. you're working on that fucking trajectory, mate, which is good. So, do you know what? Let's let's play devil's advocate here. Yeah. Recovery. Yeah. Lots of training sessions then. Lots in, of training in terms session. of that. Do you think your recovery is going to change slightly as time progresses on? Let's be honest. Father time is obviously going to be fighting against you each and every sort of way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it'd have to get better. Um, I, my recovery is my recovery at the moment is moaning, <laughs> uh, it's food, occasionally a massage gun. Uh, nah, to be honest, like, oh, shout out to your sponsor. Yeah, shout out to uh, Harry. Sponsors me, uh, massage therapist. He is fucking awesome. Um, what is it? HRS massage. HR sports massage. HR sports massage. That's really the one. I don't know his Instagram handle, but I fucking know him. Have you muted him? Is that what huh? you're trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I still Harry. He's funny as fuck. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I get massages off him when, like, when it gets really bad. I do hit the chiropractor, like, oh, not as much as I should. Um, but I do look after myself. Like I said, I've trained for a long time. I'm not a retard. If I know something hurts, yep. I'll fucking sort it out. Or if I know, I'm like, oh, that's getting tight, I'll do some extra stretches while I'm watching the TV or whatever. Um, Again, got more, results, more body and mind stuff. place I have started using oh, yeah, recently. Nice. Yeah, we've actually... That cold Jesus. Fucking cold. And do you know the worst thing about it? It's not even that cold. It's, it's so, because it's got the jet on it. No, but it's fucking eight degrees. If anyone said to you eight degree water, you'd be like, yeah, that's sound. Yeah. No drama. Getting it, it's fucking Baltic. It's because, I think you mentioned it because it's been moved and the water's circulating. It's even yeah. colder. And I was like, oh, fuck. This. Yeah, results, body and mind and bath. I can't recommend them enough. Fucking awesome recovery room. I do, that's right, I didn't say that. I do go, probably go down at least once a month. Yeah. Um, go sauna, cold plunge, sauna, cold plunge, get in a hydro shower, like sort myself out. Um, literally just have an hour to myself with a podcast on, just chilling. Like, ah, that is my recovery, to be fair. Um, I wish I had more time for recovery. Like I said, in a perfect world, I'd be a full time athlete. I'd recover during the day, I'd stretch for an hour, I'd do X, Y, and Z, I'd have an extra nap, but I don't. I work eight hours in between. So you that's why moaning is a staple in my recovery routine. <laughs> He says you get an extra nap. If you go on to Beth's store, you'll see all the times he's napping. Yeah, I, I sleep a lot of the time. Like, bless her. When I'm at home, I'm useless. I'm usually asleep, yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah, let's sit down and watch the film. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> Just some annoying kids, but yeah. Yeah, sound. <laughs> yeah. It's a little kid. I fucking hate kids. Can we put that on the podcast, how much I hate kids? You can do if you want. Uh, I, know, I know you're not doing kids' classes here, are you? So. No, no, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I'm not teaching them. No, I just hate those ones. If you, yeah, honestly, if you wear hood rich and walk around the streets, I hate you immediately. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> if you wear hood rich. I think it. the irony is that, again, he thinks he could do a single-layer takedown on you. Yeah, embarrassing. <laughs> of all people sword. he's chatting to. It's like human. <laughs> Puny human. It'll <laughs> <He's gonna, laughs> be like a repeat of ADCC or Gordon like holding his leg in front of Nicky Rod. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. you get to do a single leg. Try okay. it, bitch. <laughs> Bastards. But I think, like I said, you are, you're doing a lot. And I think as time progresses on, like, mm. and I'm going to say touch wood, that you get the opportunity to yeah, allow yourself to obviously do more recovery and stuff like that. Again, yes, mate, mate. it's just going to put even more. I do, like, it. like I said, like, I'm not an idiot. If I know I need it, like if I, honestly, if I get to the point where I'm, like, I'm actually about to break, I will, I'll miss the training session and I'll go do some recovery because it gets to that point where I really need it. But I'm not one of those guys, fuck me, some people, they get a little bit of an ache and they're like, oh God, I've trained so much and they're fucking two days off. That's just embarrassing. <laughs> Man, or I'll take an hour off and I'll sort myself out and come back to it. I think it's people who, can, <clears throat> if you've dealt with the whole, oh, I've done legs today, right? Yeah. And your legs then recover and it's like, oh, it's leg day again today. Yeah. If you've done that for about a good six months of like week in, week out, yeah. right, you then get to a point of going, right, okay. Just yeah. build up some fucking like, tolerance. I know we're not allowed to say it anymore, but people need to man the fuck up people think they work hard they do not work no. hard 
like Mark the Queen on your, on yeah. your thing. People are just pussies. Most people are pussies. <laughs> that could be fucking more true. Yeah. Like, honestly, if people do a little bit of work and think they've worked hard. You've not. You've done the bare minimum. Yeah. Go and work hard. And yeah, work hard properly and then tell me you fucking that yeah. you hurt. One final sponsor shout out to the team at Inner Chimp. Inner Chimp is a brand name that really speaks to grapplers and fighters. One we can believe and relate to on a personal level. Inner Chimp is simply catchy, right? And with small tweaks can be your general gym wear and casual wear and rash guards like this for men, women and children. Inner Chimp is ethically produced and has turned down cheaper production overseas to ensure this understanding that we only have one earth right which we need to look after this is at the forefront of their production decisions and we want you our listeners and viewers to have a sense of accomplishment in knowing that you are doing your part when buying their products inner chimp tees are 100 percent organic cotton their packaging 80 percent recycled cardboard and all of their products are designed to last their production and manufacturing is in the uk trying and aiming to be as eco-friendly as possible, leaving close to zero global footprint. But to put it simply, Inner Chimp has a massive passion for the sport, attention to detail and our planet in mind, and always at the forefront of your own Inner Chimp. Go check out their website, www.inner-chimp.co.uk or go check out their Instagram at inner underscore chimp. Thank you for your time. And for, uh, normally by that point, you wouldn't be telling people you were. No, yeah, you wouldn't give That's a the shit. Other thing, so once like, you're working that hard, you're like, well, this is life. Yep. So you just carry on. Like, this is the thing. I get, again, not I'm trying to sound, like, to blow my own trumpet here, but people yeah. are like, how do you balance doing fucking everything? I said, I just got to. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> Same as that. Yeah. Like, it's simple as that. Like, work yeah. hard. Make I work time. hard. Like, that's it's it. like everyone's favourite thing. Like, no, nothing to do with jiu-jitsu, just like even getting fit. Oh, I would go to the gym, but I ain't got time. What? Fuck off. Like everyone, everyone's favourite. This is why I don't get time. like a Fine time. completely different podcast, but how Molly May got slated obviously for a whole twenty four hours in the day comment. Yeah, yeah. And don't I worry, like, I think she's a tit. But <laughs> the point she makes, I do agree with. Yeah, you've got twenty four hours in a day, fucking use it. Yeah. No. Yeah, and, and exactly yeah, I couldn't agree more. People's favourite thing is I ain't got time, you have got time, you just don't Yeah, want it. it's mental. Um what I was going to say then, I think what would be really useful from your experiences so yeah. far would be if you are a white belt starting yeah. out who needs to get stronger, yeah. what sort of structure would you advise them then uh, in terms of weight training and jiu-jitsu and stuff like that? So let's from take Mr. Young Kid here. Who Mr. Kid who thinks he's going to double leg me. Yeah. yeah um, well, predominantly jiu-jitsu. If you want to be good at jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu. That's your core. Train jiu-jitsu as much as you possibly can. Fit in between... Uh, if I was going to suggest three sessions a week, three full body sessions a week, yep. hit your compounds, don't worry about anything fancy, do not get a fucking cable fly because they make your chest massive, they don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> first. Yeah. yeah. Do, you know I mean? do your compounds, worry about getting strong on five lifts and just fucking nail it out of them. Like, obviously, chuck in a couple of accessories while you're in there. But well, Everyone has an arm day. Every, yeah, fucking biceps, obviously. Every day. Squat do a zerter right. squat, you can train biceps and legs at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> fucking mint. No. <laughs> um, yeah, they, uh, get your compounds in, work hard at them, actually follow a structured plan. Yes. Don't, don't be that guy that goes in there and oh. goes, I'm doing three times eight of this weight. Because if you could do three times eight of this weight, your first set was a fucking waste of time. If you can still do the same numbers on that weight, at your third set, first set, waste of time, second set, waste yeah. of time. Go in, fucking work hard. Like everyone's, oh, I work really hard in the gym. No, you don't. If you're going to work hard, actually work hard. Same as Jiu Jitsu, work to failure. That, I, I literally you know got mean? to mention that, failure. People fear it, right? What happens yeah. if I drop the weight? Well, then you realise you've only done six out of the eight reps, and guess yeah. what? Next week you're going to try and do six, then yeah. you're going to try and do seven, and then you're going to try and do eight, and then you're so going to put the weight up. the progressive load, overload. Like yeah. people, well, it's the same people want a f quick fix. I want the muscles, I want to be strong, I want to do this. How do I do it? There is no fucking magical way. Work your fucking dick off. Be boring. Be a robot. Or trend. <laughs> or loads of loads of trend. Yeah. <laughs> trend hard. Is In what the saying. eyeballs. <laughs> That's the best place to put it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, According to eyeball Paul. Yeah. yeah. No, just fucking be boring. It, like, you might not enjoy it, but it's an hour of a day you don't enjoy. Go to the gym and do what is necessary mm. and you will get those awards. Don't be the guy that hops from one workout. You don't have to be... Like you, you don't have to be one of those women that changes, it's it's does the apple diet and the liquor Dorito diet. You yeah, like, it's interesting, sir, because again, you still get the same thing in terms of gym hoppers. Yeah, same for everyone changes. Oh, I didn't get my blue belt, so I'm going to move to a different gym. Oh yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. but it's the same. But it's the same, <coughs> basically, context. 
Yeah, I want sure. the quick fix. Yeah. I want the g- gratitude for Nothing it. Nothing if <laughs> quick fixes. If it was a quick one, they don't work. The quick fixes don't exist. It's you've got to work hard at anything. But if you just don't bother, like if you're not willing to put in the work, I just don't bother. Nah. In my eyes, like it, you're wasting everyone's time. Yeah, like as well as your own. Just go home and eat cake. I mean, I'll be I'll be honest. The one thing it's kind of again I'm keeping an eye on it at the moment is there are a lot of people who are jumping into the jiu-jitsu scene, yeah. right? PTs who are then saying, right, oh yeah, I can do everything for these oh, athletes. And I'm like, right, yeah. Mate, you've not even got an SNC qualification, right? You've got your eight week PT course type <coughs> of thing, yeah. right? And you're now saying that you can just help all the jiu-jitsu athletes in the world type yeah, of thing. Yeah, because you like, know how to, all, PT qualifications are bollocks, right? If you're gonna find a tra- <laughs> if you're gonna find a trainer, fucking find a trainer, actually watch him, actually speak to him, or maybe even watch him train someone. Find out if he actually knows what he's doing. PT qualifications are bollocks. I got mine while I was in sixth form. I don't even remember doing it. Pretty sure I got a booklet and then an answer booklet. And I read it. It was like, question one, what is butter a carb? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and did that. And then I got this qualification to post. And 99% of PTs in your local gym are fucking useless, haven't got a clue, and can't get themselves in, can't even get themselves in shape, let alone you. Um, and especially can't do S&C for sport. S&C... And getting in shape, two very different fucking yeah. things. It's like, I think, imagine you get questions about the shoulder pressing you're doing without any support for your core type. Thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Why are you doing that? Should you want any like, yeah. well, no. Shouldn't you be wearing a belt? I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> why would I be wearing a belt? <laughs> why, is your, why is your back hunch for those Zerka squats? Sorry, that's not the right correct posture and yeah, all this type of stuff. I, and it's just that, like, it, mate, it's the same thing again. People, people are so un, un, uneducated about one training, two nutrition. Yeah. And I think there should be more in schools. 100%. I think that would be. Well, More hopefully helpful. with the push with the UK BJA, BJJA, obviously get it into schools and stuff like that. That'll be really cool. Yeah, be really um, cool. I just, so. I just think, oh, well, some people don't like sport, but you should do it because one, it's good for you. You'll find something. Everyone, yeah, there, there, is, there some, is something for, that for everyone. everyone can enjoy. And this is you. I say this is my point with the other consultancy, with the lifestyle clients that we got, right? Yeah. Like, whatever you enjoy, right? I do not give a fuck. It doesn't need to be the gym. It doesn't need to be what social media kind of depicts, depicts, uh, depicts to you, right? Be yeah. that jujitsu, crossfit, bodybuilding, whatever it could be, yeah. right? Or what the new trendiest fucking thing is. If you enjoy fucking slacklining, right? Walking yeah. on a fucking tightrope. I don't care yeah. because you're going to go out, you're going to move, you're going to be active and you're going to make time for it. That's yeah, the thing. Fucking right. Like, yeah, if you enjoy doing it, do it. I, I, yeah, that everyone should be doing something active, like, period, in my eyes. If you don't, you're just a lazy turd. I don't get why you're not. Yeah. Like, it's, it, it's not, it's not um, a secret anymore. Moving or being fit or doing something is good for you. Yeah. Like, it, find something and get fit. I, people are just, oh, I don't like going to the gym. All right, cool, but what do you like doing? Find something else. Yeah. Get in shape. You ain't got to be a bodybuilder. You ain't got to be a weirdo who's totally obsessed with training or jiu-jitsu like I have. But find find something and make it work for you. Yeah. And keep yourself fit and healthy. And then don't be a drain on the NHS when you're useless. Well, mate, I, again, like I said, you see some of the numbers that come from it. And I, I, I'll be open about it. So I had a mentor who simply said, look, you are never, ever, ever going to run out of clients. No, fucking right. No. The, some people we, just haven't got, got it in them. We've got an obesity crisis. Yeah, yeah? fucking right. I'm never going to run out, run out of people to help, basically. No, which is like sure. it's fucking class in terms of being able to help people turn around and obviously educate them and stuff like yeah. that. But it's just one of those things where it's just like, right, okay, it's really unwell known. We can see it's going through like multiple generations of family now yeah. in the sense that they have no idea on what to do, yeah. right? In terms of they didn't know how to cook. Yeah. They've now had kids who've got no idea on how to cook. Yeah. And then they also then have to be as an individual to be like the black sheep of the family to then like stand out and start cooking, let's say. Yeah. yeah. And start taking responsibility. Just, oh, this is a fucking great point, actually, that we're leading on to. And Please. James Cooper, uh, do you know, he, Black Belt, trained yes. in London. Yeah, yeah, awesome. He put this on his story and I replied to it and we had a little chat about this. In shape people get more stick than fatties. Ooh. That's and interesting. Because, like you said, so you'd have a generations of fat people in your family. One person's like, Joe, oh, fuck this, I'm getting in shape. Do you know what happens to him? They're like, you weirdo, what do you mean you're not coming to the pub? Or what do you, what do you mean you're not having chicken nuggets? What, what do you mean you don't want a McDonald's? Yeah. Or you're a weirdo, you only eat that, you eat the same thing every day, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, he's actually trying to better his life. Yeah. But it's like the norm now to drink nine pints of Stella and punch your missus at night <laughs> rather, than, <laughs> rather than go to the gym and sort yourself out. And that, that, is, that is the truth of it, which is a sad what? truth. And that's what he said. Like, like me, like, like 
people will see it and they'll be like, oh, bet he does this, bet he does that, bet he don't work hard, bet it's like, it's all fake. No, I fucking work my dick off. Yep. And yeah, and this, in shape people get more stick. Like if I take my top off on a hot day, everyone's like, oh, he's showing off because he's got abs. No, I'm fucking hot. And I train to try to try and look hot, with, te- hot with temperature, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking boiling. <laughs> His head's this much. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, what I mean, like hot temperature wise. And I'm like, fuck it. Yeah, I work hard. I'm taking my top off. I think I look good. You get some fucking fat bloke at the pub, takes his top off, and everyone's like, well, yeah, that's fucking our Steve. He's got yeah. his belly out. Like, no one cares. Nah. Do you know what I mean? And it, it, I'll fucking stick by that. It's interesting. I'd get, more, sh- I'd get uh, more stick for having my top off than fucking Do you know what? downward The thing is, though, I think it's actually gone on a lot longer because, again, I, I think I brought this up previously. If you look culturally, right, yeah. back in times, right, all of the kings, emperors that ruled the different countries, right, yeah. all really overweight. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and it. it's also because they were the ones they could afford to fucking eat. Eat, yeah. exactly. Right. So they could afford the nice drink. And now we're, we're, the, yeah. now we're in a, in, a, in a society, right, where we've got an, an abundance of food available to us at all times, yeah. right? And finances obviously have increased to be able to afford these different things. If you take back, families used to pitch in to be able to go and get the turkey for Christmas, yeah, yeah to all enjoy this one big meal. Now you can do it every fucking weekend if you wanted to. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. right, and that's it. And so people don't understand that there's a balance with which is now on the, in the opposite side. Yeah, but that's so. It, but I agree with you. It came up. Food's really easy to get, but now the quality of food because the companies want to make more money. The quality oh, of food's now getting lower. Like some people still think a chicken nugget's actually chicken. <laughs> Like yeah, it blows my mind. I think what was it popcorn? Ch- uh, popcorn chicken. It was a uh, rabbit. I think was originally what yeah, it was. Yeah, what it's the just, like, fuck? What you like, if you get this big bag of frozen chicken dinosaurs or whatever the fuck it is out of the freezer, ah, it's not chicken. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> just basically chicken bones grounded up altogether. Yeah, lush. Um, but what was the other thing I was going to mention was uh, yeah, getting more stick for that, uh, and then that's yeah. it. Guys trying to get in shape, yeah. right? Don't get too thin. Right. Oh yeah, don't get too thin, don't get too big. Oh, we don't want to do that. Or like, honest, even like my mum said it to me when I first started going to the gym, oh, you don't want to be drinking those protein shakes. Cause yeah. no, people are, don't know what it is. Like my mum thought I was necking a load of trend. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do, then they did the creatine, like what's that mystical yeah. white powder? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like... <laughs> it's not the good ones. No, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it does. There is that stigma against it. And as much of like you work hard, get yourself in shape, and there's still yeah, going to be someone being like, "Loser, what's he doing? Looking after himself?" Yeah, mate. I, Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you got to be a weirdo. And always, like we all have a party. I'll quite happily go and get shit faced at a pub and get karaoke up, and, and I'll sing karaoke all fucking night and be an idiot. But like, I'll do it in moderation. I'll do that, and then I won't go out for three months. Yeah, like, that, that's good for me. I'll yeah, have a blowout, yeah. and then I'll chill. But then I'm still the weirdo because I don't go out every weekend and sniff pack it with my mates. Yeah, mate. You just go sniff bait aliens. instead. Yeah, I just do bait <laughs> aliens. Yeah, exactly. Get the shakes. Fuck, you know, I love it. Um, right, I know we've got loads of fucking questions to go through. Oh, so, shit, um, yes. Yeah, we'll grab yeah, that. Grab I think we're definitely an hour into this so far. Yeah, uh, fuck off. How has BJJ impacted your life outside of the dojo? Oh, oh massively. Um, for one, uh, looking after myself more, like I said, because I got more serious about it and I just thought, right, I need to be 100% in. For one, not one, not going out on the piss as much. Yeah, like so I'm like open mats on Sunday morning. I'm That's going there. I'm not going club out club on Obviously, they're not going out. Yeah, on the I usually like, go out three, four nights a week. To now, I hardly ever go out. I'll go out in a blue moon. <laughs> um, yeah, for one that. Two, I'm not as much of a dickhead. Like, I'm still a dickhead, but not if anything. I think it's chilled me out a lot more. Like when you go to the gym, you work your. But one, I'm too fucking tired to be an ass. But. Um, yeah, you, you chill out, you take out, just like, you don't take your anger out at training, but do you know what I mean? It's like, it's a good yeah. de-stress tool. Um, yeah, you feel better, I'm probably in that. I'm probably a nicer person, maybe. <laughs> depends Ish. who you ask. Depends who you ask, yeah. massively. It depends if you annoy me, but, yeah. <laughs> or you're muted on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, muted on Instagram. How does that work, for example, if you come <coughs> across someone and you're muted on Instagram, they start chatting to you, and you're like, Shh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no, it impacts my life massively. I uh, definitely think, for the benefit of, well, no, I think everything has benefited from it, to be honest. Maybe I've got hardly any free time anymore, so that's definitely not a good one. Mrs. definitely won't say it's been good for our social life, but um, yeah, no, I definitely has impacted my life massively. And yeah. I think it's good. Like you, meet, you meet good people doing jiu-jitsu. Mm. I've made very, very good friends. And I've also, and now, I've also lost friends that weren't good friends. That's interesting. Yeah, which is good. 
once you don't have the time to do X, Y, and Z that you used to do with your old friends, you're like, oh, yeah, maybe we actually had fuck all in common. Yeah. So, That's, yeah, it's I think it's been good. It's, yeah. it's certainly things that I've realised over, over the years as well <coughs> with different friendship groups that when you start having a passion for different things, yeah. that the normal things which you then kind of say, well, this isn't a necessity, I don't need to do this every single time yeah. or every weekend. Yeah. And then they get funny about it. And then oh, like, yeah, for sure. Right, you should be basically, again, back to my model, I'll clap for everyone until it's my turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. the idea of like, you decide, if you decided, right, to pack this all in, yeah, and set up, let's say, a fucking karate school, just for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Aikido. Um, Aikido, my dojo all over. Yeah. Um, I'd be like, wicked. I've got no issue with it. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd be there trying to do everything Fucking I can. Right. As long as you're it. happy, you carry on. As long as it don't affect me, I don't yeah. really care. But I think it's all good. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you'll pick up on this one. Did he become British champ- Jiu Jitsu champion because I hung him from the banisters when he was a kid? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know who did this. So it's just a story. When we were young, me and my sister were playing. Uh, but me and my sister Lorna, we were, just, we were just playing in the house doing fucking mental shit. She had an idea where it's, I'm going to hang you from the banister. And I was a young kid. I'm like, yeah, fucking mint. Sounds great. I'm pretty sure it was like uh, the belt around, um, like a dressing gown or something. <laughs> wrapped it around my neck, wrapped it on the banister. And I'm like, go on then, put me over. <laughs> <coughs> and honestly, she was just about to like, drop me off. And obviously I would have died. <laughs> but we didn't know that. And just as I was about to go off the side, my mum walked into the hallway and was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> obviously got me down, took it off my neck. It was like, obviously went mad at my sister. So I don't know, that was either Rich and Harry because they know that story or, or it was Lorna, which is fucking funny if she remembers it. But yeah, I always remember that, mental. Two kids <laughs> playing and probably nearly died. But. <laughs> oh, mate, that's class. Right, have you ever considered going full liver king and just living your day-to-day life without your shirt on? Yes, every day. <laughs> every, every day. Every, yeah, every day it's warm, I'm like, I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> I could be that guy. <laughs> uh, next one, I think this is more up your street. Dicks as fingers or fingers as dicks? Oh. Dicks. <laughs> I love to be dicks as fingers. <laughs> dicks as fingers, yeah. Imagine that. Just yeah. Like, or yeah. lovely fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Especially my job. What would you like to know, sir? Dicks on my head. You must yeah. have seen... Was it Ethan? Yeah, he's fucking... He was doing his reels with the fucking clippers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That would literally be me full time. So, hey, yeah. what was it? And then when you do the mercy grips with fucking Rich as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck, I would have no training partners. Oh, uh, no, no one wants to tra- try to smother me again. Oh, no, <laughs> not again. <laughs> yeah, wet willies. Oh, I like it. God, right. Um, oh, okay. Are we too quick to see this kind of physique in jiu-jitsu and just start screaming steroids? Yes, 100%. Like, like I said what before. What earlier. Well, I just, yeah. Peter, as soon as someone's in shape, everyone's like, oh, he's obviously doing something. Or he's just worked his balls off for years and you're only seeing the finished product. Like, let's take an Olympic athlete, for example. Yeah. Right? I appreciate it's some sports which would be a little bit out of the question for it. Yeah. Majority of them, you would say, are in shape, right? Yeah, fuck yeah. You wouldn't just simply just jump to that conclusion. Yeah. But for a sport that's outside of the Olympics, the yeah, 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 accusations no, fact, come along yeah. straight away. 100%. And it, it's, people always do it with like size as well. Like, let's be honest, if you're not a moron, you know cyclists, they're fucking doping because they do a ridiculous sport which is fucking hard and they need that edge. But because he's not massive and he's not flexing a bicep, mm. everyone's like, well, no, he's fine. Obviously, he gets tested, so we're good with that. Fuck Mental. off. If you're that naive, grow up. And if you don't know about it, go and watch, uh, what was that program on Netflix? It's still there. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Icarus. Yes. Go and watch Icarus. It will open your eyes up and even further into the Olympics comment type of thing, which is just even scarier, to say the least. But. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. I, Feel it. Everyone's everyone likes to use that as an excuse rather than be like, oh, that guy's work, work, works really hard, like fair play, or like that guy trains well, or that guy's done a lot, or I bet he's trained for years. It's mm. always, ah, yeah, he's on the gear. But then do you know what? Even with the statement of oh, I'm on the gear, right? There's people that you and me both know who are on gear, right, right. and still look like a bag of soup. Yeah, that's the main misconception with gear. People think you stab it in, and then it's like Popeye, and you're like, bah, 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 look at me, I'm the shit. No, you work your dick off. Like it's not. It, it, it's not um, like I said it's not a quick fix it's not because no. if it was guarantee you'd all be doing it every single person in the world would be like fucking you stab that in you once and you're massive yep. everyone would be massive because yep. everyone's lazy no mm. one wants to do the hard work It's it doesn't do it for you it, it gives you that little 
edge right at the end to get better, but you'll still be in top, top shape, and then you do that extra bit. It's performance it's, enhancing. It's drugs. Exactly, you exactly. It's performance enhancing, not gets you fucking massive and rips easy. <laughs> like, people don't understand that, and I get that. People don't, don't know what they are, what they do, and they, yeah, but they're blind to it. And it's the same as nutrition. People don't know what fucking yeah, chicken does to you, really. Exactly. And it's the same as that. I, I think this is the thing, though. It comes to my, my stance on it all, right, is the fact that we need to be talking more about it in the sense of not accusations, but yeah. more, like, knowledge around it, right? Yeah, for because sure. If we're in a sport which isn't tested, yeah. right, which everyone is aware of, yeah. right, then there needs to be an element of safety behind it. Is this whole safe sex talk type thing, right? Yeah. If we yeah. keep it as a dark and dingy secret and like, oh no, you shouldn't be talking about it, more idiots are going to start doing stupid things, yeah, right? For sure. And that's when we get people from Brazil taking fucking trainer IBJJF. You're like, yeah. why the fuck are you even touching that? And like, it's just like, if like if you act, if you want to be honest as well, seventy five percent of people in your local sports centre gym will be on steroids and they all look like shit because yep. they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Nope, exactly. But yeah, it's, it's much more common than everyone thinks. Yeah. People just shout at the guys who look in shape, but it's not. That guy might work his dick off and not be on him. But you've got Dave. I, I don't know why Dave is. is he's always called Dave. Oh, we, use, we normally use Fat Trev. But. Fat Trev or Steve or whoever the fuck it is. Like, he's probably done loads of gear, but he looks like shit because one, he either doesn't know what he's doing with it or two, He's done that thinking it does the hard work. He's not putting the graft. So he's still got a beer belly and he's still weak as piss. Yeah, exactly that. So. Right, moving on. Uh, hmm, would you agree without the muscles, you look like Sid out of Ice Age? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. Yeah, I said, I said this to him earlier. Like, Harry, I work with him, he's a prick. Yeah, fuck it, I'll agree. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> what a bell end. Uh, <laughs> how many croissants slash pastries a day to get that physique? It's all physique all oh, day. Yeah, loads of them. All of them. All of them. All of them fucking love pastries. What's the top tier pastry? Oh, my croissant, but cannot be beat. Have I ever told you my top one? What? Uh, cinnamon bun, cinnamon bun, cinnamon bun. I do like a cinnamon bun. No, there's only one reason why. When oh. my sugars start going low and I'm in at night and I'm dreaming, yeah. I just dream of cinnamon. Fair. So my body's Fair. like, you're dying right now. <laughs> it's a cinnamon bun. Cinnamon. <laughs> so, no, it's yeah. terrible, I'm like, and I'm oh. a pass on and a coffee and I am happy as a pig and shit. Fair play. When's the OnlyFans coming out? Or is it out already? Wait, it's, it's, yeah, you don't know. <laughs> cool yeah. I'm on the dark web, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. If someone would have paid to see me naked, I'd be fucking on it. <laughs> okay. Mate, I'm surprised. That's you... that full, full-time athlete job right there, that is. Hey, like I can say, but I think majority of us... Have you, did you ever do a stint of a butler in the bath at all? Oh, fuck off, yeah. Yeah, you did? Yeah, yeah I did too, back in the day. <laughs> like, easy money. Like, yeah, fucking hell. What, what time to be alive? Mate, it was good. I was at, like I said, I was at... Um, college and uni yeah. right and uh, I generally I'm pretty sure I took home about 11k one year right fucking nice. and that was just working every fucking weekend yeah. right but people don't get like you get oh you just fucking stick around in your fucking penny all day yeah don't mean wrong you do do that for part of it but I was doing the cocktail making as well yeah you're just a fucking you're just a waiter but you got your ass out yeah, yeah. Well, I was like sound this is wicked like yeah. uh, what, what, some of the, with the cocktail jobs I was ended up getting paid like 250 for some of them fucking sound for a couple I never hours got that much, so I was clearly never that good <laughs> I, mean, I did a couple and then yeah pat that in I was like that's not worth it oh, man, having really... straws fucking People poking your ass with straws. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I quit. Mine don't like that, mate. I don't yeah. know what you were doing. Not for me. I don't know what fucking parties on that. Right. Um, I'm intrigued with this one because I've also wanted to ask this. What's up with the fish eyes and cross on it? Me you've been posting on some of your stories. And, uh, oh, fucking. What does uh, that mean? That is after uh, the grapple first, after all the softies in the comments kicking off, like I said, saying, oh, he's, he's on all the gear under the sun. He's this, he's that. I was like, fuck off, it's all the pastries I eat. And it's funny, Chris uh, <coughs> Chris Thompson was actually, he commented on the post, he was, uh, he's the guy who runs Grapple Fest, if you don't know, fucking top bloke. He put in, uh, we've tested Mark, and he's come back full to the brim of meat pies. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's it, it is the pastries, I like it. And I've just fucking swam with that. And I put the eyes in the fucking fish hook, because fucking piss off little bitches. Fair enough. <laughs> love it, love it. Um, Oh, interesting one. How confident does he feel in the run-up to a fight does he have to battle self-doubt? Uh, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I did. Um, the more you do, easier it gets. Mm. And I think that's not because you're not nervous. I think that's because your confidence grows, I would assume. Yeah, but yeah, you always, you, you always get that um, 
bit of self-doubt, especially the night before. I'm usually the night before. Usually leading up to it, when I'm like training really hard, I'm fucking excited. I'm like, yeah, fucking can't wait. It's going to be wicked. And then it's like right at the end when I'm like, what have it done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, then it gets you. But then once I'm always nervous the night before, once I wake up in the morning, I'm not nervous anymore because I'm like, well, I'm up now. I'm fucking doing it. So it's too late. I'll just go out and have a bash, basically. Yep. So yeah, um, but definitely at the start when you don't compete a lot, yeah, no, fuck, I used to be shitting myself. You're in your head like, oh God, what happens if this happens? What happens if this happens? But yeah, the more you do, easier it gets. But like I said, once I woke up on the morning, I'm like, well, I'm doing it now. So yeah. there's no point worrying about it. Let's get stuck in. Let's twist the question, obviously, slightly. Um, <clears throat> when you're coaching an athlete, how, does, how are the nerves then, for example? Oh yeah, more. I get more irate, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's a picture of me of, you, like, you see that picture of me when I'm coaching? I think so. Someone, yeah. yeah, I'm on the mat shouting and that vein in my neck looks like it's going to Oh, God, yeah, 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 I remember that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm literally like the guy from Longish Hours and you're like, cut his fucking <laughs> Yeah, that's me. Uh, yeah, no, I get nervous with people. I want them to do well, like, not just because they're students or whatever, um, but they're all friends. Everyone I train with is a friend. I want them to do well. I want them to fucking win and then come off, give me a fucking fist bump and then we'll go and get your medal. Yeah. Yeah, no, um... Yeah, I get nervous for that too. Yeah, yeah for sure. Would you say more nervous, do you think? Ooh, probably not more nervous. No. But close. Yeah. Yeah, no, pr- probably on fucking equal par, to be fair. Uh, especially especially I thought there. it'd be a different perspective type of thing. So now, obviously, as you've gone up through the belt ranks, mm. your responsibility, obviously, is an expanded type thing rather than just your own game. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, and, well, you, and you also get that nervous of, fuck, what if I didn't teach him that? What if you don't know how to get out of that? Have I not taught him everything? You're like, fuck. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, so yeah, you get that bit as well, for sure. Yeah. Have, I, have you had any of these moments where like, oh fuck, we hasn't actually taught him this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> coach I don't want to say any, anything of who it was, but yeah, it was, I was, it was a comp, I wasn't there. Someone went to do a comp and basically they were in a situation that I hadn't told them to get out of because I was like, no one's going to do that. It be fine. <laughs> and it happened and I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> so yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I know trying to be Ezekiel from like I don't know from bottom. <laughs> no, it's always some bullshit, isn't it? Yeah, it's some bullshit sub that never works, and it works that one time. You're like, dickhead. Okay. Next time, training plan, right? Oh, yeah. Hot. yeah, exactly. Right, guys. Today we're training this thing. Didn't you say last week this wouldn't happen? Well, well, it fucking does, right? <laughs> Stop asking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. How important are burpees to maintaining good order and discipline in class? Fucking right. Yeah, it's a martial art at the end of the day. Like. <laughs> at the end of the day martial art I used, I did, I've done martial arts when I was young as well like other traditional martial arts discipline is a massive thing of uh, martial arts for me and Ooh, you, got, you got belts elsewhere? Uh, yeah I did uh, taekwondo when I was younger well, I did that Thai guys will love you then huh? <laughs> Thai guys will love you yeah, then yeah exactly yeah. so I did taekwondo for fucking years when I was young that was like alongside football and then gave up when football got more serious so I did uh, taekwondo as a kid and then I did kickboxing a bit later on as well Ooh. Um, but uh yeah, dis- it's just discipline. People need to- some people need the discipline. See, some some people need to list that the board, yep. fuck around and find out. Like, if you're not going to put the work in, as a consequence, and that's that for me. It's interesting. I, um, At the end of the day, it's a burpee. I'm not asking you to go and fucking build a pyramid or go and cure go, cancer. Yeah, cure <laughs> cancer or go into a mine and fucking whatever, mine for gold until you die. It's a burpee. You've got to lie down and stand back up. If you find that too hard, then fuck off. Oh, so, yeah, in my little stint of a CrossFit type of thing, yeah. it was like, I always got drilled burpees back in the day was the more traditional stood up, squat down, yeah. plank out, yeah. back in, stand up. Oh no, pa- uh, plank out, push up, stand yeah. back up, like proper like traditional. Yeah. Got the CrossFit, like just get your ass to the fucking floor as quick as you can and then yeah. like get back yeah, up. Fuck it. Like, <laughs> if you do enough it. burpees, you learn to love them. Like yeah. we all fucking ape. I quite like doing burpees. At the end of the day, if you do 10 burpees, it's not hurt you. All it's done is probably made your cardio better. Yeah. And then I think I probably will categorically say burpees do not get easier. You just get better at them. Yeah. <laughs> you just get better. Or you just, you just fucking like, it's a burpee. I've got to lie down and stand up. Like, What's going to happen if you get you get to spool on someone? Yeah, exactly. If, especially if you're doing jiu-jitsu and you're knackered and you can't lie down and stand up very quick. You're well, then you need them. to, if you ever want to compete, you better learn very quick. Yeah, makes sense. <coughs> makes sense. Um, right. Should MMA fighters be promoted in BJJ if they don't really train in BJJ classes? Uh, tough one. Uh, no. It would be my first answer. Yep. Because... Uh, well, that's like me getting a belt in Muay Thai and I don't train Muay Thai <laughs> it, it, at the end of the day. Like, I know you do, you will do some grappling, 
but are you a jiu-jitsu student? Probably not. No. Like, it's, it's very different. If you're the very, very top levels of MMA, where your jiu-jitsu has got to be shit ox, obviously other people are as well. That's a, uh, that's a very different case in my eyes. But then I'm also like, if you are at that top level fighting MMA, would you give a fuck about getting a blue belt or a purple belt? Probably not. No. Nope. Because you never wear it because you don't own a gi. Yeah. <laughs> like, for me, yeah, if you're not, you're not putting a gi on, I don't really... It, it's hard because if you want to compete in no gi, obviously you want to go at the belts and, and move through. As long as your jiu-jitsu is good enough in no gi that when you put on a gi, you're not an absolute retard... I can put up with it. But if you're if you're fucking brown belt in jiu-jitsu, but you put on a gi and you are fucking lost, your jiu-jitsu's not that good. That's fair. That's fair. Like, like, Eddie, like Eddie Bravo what says, isn't he? Like, no, um, what was he? Uh, when he says, like, no gi is just... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No gi, gi, gi is just gi is no, just no gi, gi, gi with a gi, gi, gi on. on. Yeah. yeah, do you know what I mean? So if your no gi was that good, where you deserve a brown belt, then you should be able to put on a gi and not be useless. If so, I'm happy with it. If not, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you think the general quality of BJJ promotions is getting worse? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna. That's, I think that's the case for everything. Jiu Jitsu is growing massively. People want to make the money. People want to hand out belts because that keeps people coming. Like I think it's that quick fix thing again. Quick fix, yeah, people yeah. People want gra instant gratification. Yeah, people want to get to that level when they probably don't deserve it. Um, don't get me wrong, I think jiu-jitsu is still up there. Like, if you've got a jiu-jitsu black belt, it does. It usually means something. Um, but obviously, as time goes on, it gets more popular. That is going to be watered down. Mm. And I find... But like, let's be honest, if you fucking train jiu-jitsu, you know... Like we said earlier, there's a fucking difference in belts. You can have a blue belt that will kick the fuck out of you. You can also have a blue belt that you wonder if you even trains. Yeah, no, I get that. Completely. So, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, it is being walked down 100%. Um, not, not to the level of like traditional martial arts. Like, fuck me, I nearly got a black belt in Taekwondo and I was fucking shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, and I knew yeah. fuck all. Uh, so, yeah, it's not as bad as that. But yeah, my answer would be yes. So in next Grapple Fest, we're going to see you doing for like a spinning back kick, yeah? Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> Flying side kicks. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Right. Uh, what effect does hair gel have on the grip strength test? <laughs> Loads. I did, last time I did that grip strength test, I was at work. I had hair gel on my hands. Not really that. My hands are weirdly small. And I fucked it up. So Fine. we're going we'll, to have to We'll be we'll, do we'll doing it after this anyway. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> right. How important is battling a pair of hobbyist dads in their late 30s for competition prep? Oh, absolutely essential. <laughs> um, You've yeah. got dad strength, that's why. Yeah. No, I got uh, a couple of guys I train with, both fucking top blokes, always fucking wake up and put a shift in for me if I need them. Both dads are two. Just, yeah, fair play. Both... Um, <laughs> Well, Gary and Crocker both turn up whenever I fucking need them and I can't fuck them enough for that. Yeah, They'll so put up with my bullshit at seven o'clock in the morning so I need extra rounds. So fucking essential. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Right, okay. Um, where do you find the babies he eats for breakfast? Well, just whatever one pisses me off the most, to be honest. <laughs> Depending where I am. <laughs> if I'm in a cafe enjoying my croissant and coffee and there's a baby crying over there, that one. <laughs> uh, and then finally, what's his famous sandwich? Oh, right, yeah. Um, so, so I was given a, I was, I was given a nickname, Egg and Cress. It's another thing. I was basically at a competition. Everyone was eating whatever and I just pulled out Egg and Cress sandwich and started nailing it. And uh, Jamie's first thing was like, is that why you're in such shape? Because you eat egg and crest sandwiches. <laughs> and suddenly it caught on and then everyone was calling me Egg. And I'm like, oh, this is the worst nickname ever. <laughs> yeah, now Pedro still calls me Egg. I see he's like, Egg. And I'm like, oh, why is that stuck? <laughs> so yeah, Egg and crest sandwiches. Okay, that is uh, well. the worst nickname in the world that I have. Yeah. Jesus Christ, mate. I, I've never had the privilege of giving, being given a nickname other than Nutritious J. Um, so, <laughs> nice. Or King of the Avocados was the other one, I think. The other one I was like, I don't even like avocados. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, if it's a bad one, you're like, oh, what a cool one. Rick, like, um, tell us calls Rich Superman. I'm like, that's wicked. <laughs> I want one. I'm called fucking Egg. <laughs> <laughs> what a load of crap. No, I'd imagine if someone would name Egg, is that they're literally just a ball, right? Yeah, because when someone hears me called Egg, 
when the other person's walked off, they're like, why are you called egg? And I'm like, oh, don't. don't. <laughs> I think you should play on it. Like, we asked... Um, I'm going to make Strat- it up. I'll be like, mate, out of... Uh, What's the fucking Jamaican bobsleigh when he's got a lucky egg? And it's going to be me. Sanka. <laughs> you want to kiss my lucky egg, man? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I used to do bob... Uh, I was part of the bobsleigh yeah, team. Yeah, it was actually the Jamaican bobsleigh team. That was what I called egg. Yeah, oh, yeah, mate, that's class, honestly. Uh, it reminds me of like, uh, Dan Strauss. I'm pretty sure the story he told us about why he's called Raspberry 8 was a load of bollocks. <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, I went to Costco uh, and I used to like, eat raspberries all the fucking time and all this type of jazz and that's why they gave called me Raspberry 8 and I was like, yeah, sure it was type yeah. thing. And I was like, yeah, I'm sure he keeps that to himself all the yeah. time. Um, story. We've got a bit of a staple question, which I actually got from Joe Foy, to be fair, um, off the back of like the previous guest questions type of thing, which you've kept in. Uh, what failure do you cherish the most? Oh. Ah, fucking right. Purple belt, British. Uh, lost in the final, got a silver medal. I've never been so fucking angry in my life because I, well... What I thought I worked my dick off for uh, that competition. Um, yeah, obviously, like uh, one, three fights, I think, up, got to the final. In the final, made a stupid fucking mistake, lost an advantage, and uh, oh, yeah, I've never been so fucking angry in my life. Um, but that was a kick up the ass because I, I think that was a time of I could have gone home and sulked like a little bitch and quit jiu jitsu again or just not been bothered. But it didn't, it kicked me up the fucking ass and I worked my dick off for a year and then I went back to the British the year after when I was actually at Brown Belt and then won the British. Nice. So yeah, definitely that. I had a British silver medal and I was like, that should have been a fucking gold and I worked my dick off to make sure I got the gold next nice. time I was there, and which was cool because it was at Brown Belt as well. So <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a, it's funny, I got the video from uh, the final of that. I literally, as soon as the time went, I knew I'd won. I literally, I was punching the floor. I was like, fucking yes, you did it. That last year of all that bollocks work was worth it. Yeah. Because you got that. Yeah, so definitely that was a loss uh, I needed, for sure. Nice, mate. Yeah. I literally got back to the hotel after that, and I was in the shower, and I was like, you dickhead, you lost. I you sat, were you sat on the floor rocking? No, I literally headbutted the wall in the shower, and then I was like, ah, oh, that really hurt. What'd you do that for? But yeah, that, yeah. I needed that one, I think, for sure. Nice, mate. No, that's good. Yeah. Uh, previous guest question yep. for you. You have the opportunity to win ADCC, yep. but you never compete again. Or never train jiu-jitsu again. Oh, would yeah, you, compete you, again. I'd be happy with that. No, never train jiu-jitsu never again. Never train again. So it could be best, basically. Probably not. So you train jiu jitsu but sounds. never win ADCC? Only because I don't know what the fuck I'd do with my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so if I could never train jiu jitsu again, I'd be sat there tomorrow, like. <laughs> I'd be like uh, the fucking narcos thing, so yeah. swing, like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, fuck it, obviously, win ADCC would be fucking wicked, and I'd love to. But yeah, I don't know what to do. Not only this, I just opened a fucking gym. It'd be a bit pointless. <laughs> Mate, it'd be taekwondo. Yeah, you'll have to taekwondo. Taekwondo, yeah. I could, could be, yeah. What would be the gym name? Obviously, you can't be Cobra Kai, but what would you call it? Oh, egg. So <laughs> fucking egg. mental, would it? Yeah. Yeah, egg and crest taekwondo. Yeah, that's the one. No, uh, yeah, no, I don't think I would. I love training. Oh, mate. Anything else you want to add in, dude? Uh, nothing I probably want to add in just probably a few shout outs one rich getting me into fucking jiu-jitsu and obviously uh like one of the best mates we've opened the gym together in hannah uh rr jiu-jitsu everyone is fucking welcome come down and train uh so a few sponsors so harry massage therapist uh endured uh this one's for me uh obviously bjj nutrition top guys um get involved uh, also, Grable uh, supplements. Um, yeah, that's probably it. And probably to uh, Beth to put up with me training constantly. I was going to say Beth. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, never being at home. She, yeah, I uh, can't thank her enough, to be honest. She, uh, yeah, sort of runs my life for me while I uh, bury my head in training. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, and Josh, that was it. And Josh, that was it. For, you'll be but, oh, yeah, you got one, but you can have another one. Josh, <laughs> being a legend all the time. What's, but, it, what's that? What, is it? No, it's, what's that, it's not a taxi driver. What are they called? Um, uh, chauffeur. There so we go. For, yeah, uh. fucking best chauffeur in the world. Nah, he's <laughs> no, honestly top fucking bloke. When it, he's, he's more than just that. It's, uh, he's wicked when he's there. He always fucking helps me with all of my comps. So. It's a nice dude. Yeah, man. So, yeah, all you guys, fucking awesome. 
Oh, mate. Like I said, you've been a pleasure to work with, I think, ever since that we've been working together. Genuinely, it's been like, okay, cool. I had some bad experiences with other athletes before. And yeah. it was like, oh, cool, this guy actually wants to fucking do something. Yeah. And it's like, wicked. He just listens and does stuff. And I'm like, it was a bit alien to me. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Type thing. <laughs> Normally, you get some sort of resistance, where it's the white yeah. type thing. But everything that's been asked you, mate, you've just done it without a fucking question. Fuck um, I think you had a, it wasn't a funny base on the story. You were just like, oh, what the fuck are these tingles type thing? Yeah. Like, yeah, that'll happen. Like, right. Where the fuck is this? And then yeah. literally, like a mass seller of it to everyone else. Like, everyone, like, just take it. Buy the shit. It's fantastic. <laughs> everyone fucking have it type thing. Um, but yeah, mate, it's been absolutely fucking awesome. I think you've got some uh, fucking epic opportunity in front of you in terms of everything. Um, I'd say thank you for my own jiu-jitsu fucking story because, like I said, you've helped me get better into going to super heavy rather than stay at the heavy and yeah. the struggles with that Something type of like, thing, getting the right yeah. mindset. Um, obviously, got some good goals off the back of that as well, which is wicked. And yeah, mate, we've just got some big things. Well, you've got some big things. So nah, both of fucking, uh, fucking right. But it's good. Push right. on and try and reach that level. Now, yeah, game on. Right, yeah, cool. 100%. We'll leave it there. But anyway, thank hey, you, dude. Thank you very much for having me on. No worries. Cheers, man. Thank you. Boom. Happy? Yes, mate. Wicked. Fucking love it. Yeah. That time went fucking quick. It does, man. But I try and keep an eye on it to make sure that I'm not going off too much of a tangent, but uh, hour 32 in total, mate. Fucking hell.